ACG, and I'm here with Abzi, Silver, and Johnny for a full podcast. 477 is the number. And you should also see us on um, Spotify again. Thank God. I don't know exactly what was going on there, but we've been kicked off Spotify twice. No, just lying. We haven't been kicked off. There's been an issue with uh, merging the accounts, but it should be up and running. Thanks to these guys for showing up and hanging out. And um, let's begin, because there's a, a, a bunch of stuff for Xbox, a bunch of stuff for new games coming out, and... News, we got Ubisoft, Sega had a drop in financials. I don't know if you guys saw that. The uh, Rockstar stated very clearly GTA 6 would come out when it's basically perfect, perfect. which I'm just wondering if they're already walking yeah, back the, walking back the year, release year. <laughs> yeah, It's just the way he said it during the financials. He's like, I'm going it, to owe ready. you. Oh, oh right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it. Uh, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the a couple new rumors for the Xbox and and some of the event next week, and just all of the crazy stuff that's been going on in gaming. Thanks to these guys for showing up. Let's just start this. What have you been playing? We'll start with Silver since he wasn't on last week. Um, I kind of I haven't been playing all that much. I kind of needed just to get into something wrestling again, so I've been replaying um, Nina Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um. J old JRPG classic, um, and uh, getting into Helldivers too. Now that it released uh, yesterday and and a bit of today as well. Mm -hmm. PlayStation or Xbox for Helldivers? No oh, PC or PC. Sorry, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> or Xbox. Uh, how's it run on your PC? Oh, it's running fine. Um, like I haven't experienced ex experienced or noticed any technical issues. Uh, frame rate's fine. Um, like I'm, I'm playing it on like mostly high settings, um, mm -hmm. so that that that's been fine. Um, I haven't I I also haven't experienced. I know a lot of people have had uh, issues with the servers. I haven't had that many. Um, there was an initial crash that seems to happen to everyone with the first time you go into equip yeah. something on your character. Yeah, weirdly uh, enough, that, right? that was basically the only crash I had for a very long time. Um, today I did on a very long mission, uh, thirty plus minutes where. We were wrapping things up toward the end, heading for, starting to head for the evac, and uh, and I got disconnected. Uh, Ouch. That was annoying, but uh, but that's really been kind of the only one. And I mean, we are at launch day for an online game from a relatively small developer, even if the publisher is huge. Um, so that's sort of to be expected for me. Um, I expect that there to be potentially server issues. Um, and now I, today I learned that apparently it's the biggest PC. Uh, release for for Sony, uh, so I think like I don't think they had any expectation it would be that huge. Um, so I think that goes a little way towards maybe explain explaining some of the server issues that people have been experiencing. But hopefully, hopefully they they manage to get them more stable. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, Johnny? Mostly Yakuza Infinite Wealth. It's you know a game within a game, and then it opens up another game that links with the other games, and it keeps going. So links within been, links within insane, links within cycles man. within links, yeah. Yeah, because it's got the Animal Crossing thing we saw in the trailer, mm -hmm. and that ate up like 20 hours uh, this week. Yeah. That was the only thing I wanted to play. Uh, it's insane like how addictive they, they made it. It's really cool. Uh, and then, yeah, I played some Helldivers with Silver, and our friend Lemon yesterday. We had almost an like ideal experience yesterday because it was a group of four people in comms. No, like ish, outside of the initial crash, we had like no connection problems. The game ran great on my computer. That's how I think the game really shines. And then today it was super, super dodgy. You know, I tried to connect with some guys Ooh. in the Discord with you and it kicked me out and then we did a mission with silver kicked me out again and that just removes all the right. will to play quite honestly because you're in yeah. the middle of a mission right it kicks you out you have to go back to the ship yeah like, take the drop pod back down it just sort of breaks the whole thing and the other big problem that i have is that the game doesn't have any bots we were talking about this earlier today like for me having bots in these games makes a very big difference because sometimes I just want to play solo and hone in, you know, my own gameplay. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mentioned Suicide Squad. You can say whatever you want about it, but it had some great bots 
and all the content was soloable. Uh, and here it felt pretty bad for me to play solo because I'm not yet good enough to just be able to handle everything. And Makes when sense. I tried to play with randoms, it was a disaster because people don't go to the objectives. They don't coordinate. One person even trolled me and killed me when we were about to extract for no, just, wow. for, just for lulls. So I didn't get to extract in the mission. It, so it, it's just a, a lot of that type of stuff that you have to deal with if you don't have, you know, the, the four person squad ready. Yeah. What are you guys playing in chat? What about you, Abzi? What have you been playing? Uh, still Yakuza. Um, 70 hours in, I just got to chapter eight. <laughs> That's dude, crazy. Got, dude, the game, the game is way bigger than I thought, man. What the yeah. fuck are they doing? What the fuck are they doing, dude? How, like, how, dude, the, the game is, yeah, the game is fucking mad. I, I thought, like, you know, you hit some points in the game where you're like, okay, now the game really starts. And you hit another point, and you're like, oh, now the game really starts. And then you hit another point, and you're like, what, what, what is the game anymore? Like, how many games is in this game? But, anyways, yeah, sick game. Um, and, uh, still playing Tarkov. And um, now my, you know how Binding of Isaac was like my my idol game. It was mm -hmm. like my, you know, I was playing a lot, and I switched over to Factorio. You know, it bounces between those two. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much. It's pretty much. I, it. I think I saw you trying to do Insurgency this morning, or was that yesterday? Oh yeah, Did you I played Insurgency. It popped up on I, I Discord. Was, um, just saying. Yeah, yeah. I wanted, dude. I okay. So I've been, yeah, I've been playing a lot of Tarkov and stuff, and and. Uh, I was like, I was wondering because I played some ready of, or not. I just wanted like a PVE single player tactical shooter. Mm -hmm. And you know how scarce those sh things are, man? There's, yeah, there's I do. a lot of mm -hmm. games in that. Like, there's no new Rainbow Six Vegas or something. Like, they, they don't exist. So I was left with um, ready or not. I played some of that. Um, but I, I got bored at one part because you had to like, you had to like arrest every single suspect and one of them was like missing and stuff. So I was like, okay, I alt F4. And then and then I Googled it and literally people were like, yeah, they don't they don't make them anymore. But there's this really cool mod for Insurgency Sandstorm. And it's an amazing mod. It adds like a ton of attachments, weapons, and like tactical incursion maps and stuff like that, and like cool enemies and better AI and stuff. So so I had I had a bunch of fun with that. Uh, gunplay and uh, and insurgency is awesome. It's yeah, always, it's awesome. It's a great time. Yeah, doesn't really matter even if you are just jumping in. That game feels really good regardless. Um, yeah. Yeah. For me, I've been playing some uh, Banishers. Finished up Banishers uh, for the review that's coming out, and then jumping in some other games for reviews. It is definitely a time where I'm picking and choosing what games to review because I'm coming back in. Um, after the shutdown and stuff, it's just been crazy to see how many games. And we'll talk about we'll sort of, we're going to sort of talk about the analysis paralysis, or or really when it comes down to it, the companies and their choice of release dates. Um, because Banishers, I don't know if you guys remember, was delayed once on purpose, and then once it was delayed, it sort of felt a bit like they're trying to get out of the release glut, and they're right in the middle of the release glut. They right. they legitimately could not be in a worse spot for a release. So. That that's definitely something that I've noticed when I'm looking at these releases and the the number of games. Um, also, been playing Halo uh, with some of the people in Discord in the games Discord. That has been enjoyable. Except Master Chief Collection still has these little issues that pop up that you can tell. Still? They're, they're, yeah, they're just little issues, especially as a long term player of the other versions of Halo. One, yeah. you know, like of Halo One, right. whether it be the PC or three, or, sorry, whether it be the 360 or the Xbox, there are these little things that pop up, and no matter what, also there was this disconnect. Um, we were testing network speed, and there was a disconnect between mm -hmm. the players. There was like a lag. No matter what we did, there was like this lag oh, that doesn't shit. exist anywhere else. Uh, so it's just like little things. It's, it's, it's really, yeah, it's, it's it was weird. playable. Yeah. It was awesome. Could we do legendary? Probably not, because whoever is, you know, depending on how you connect and stuff, one of those people is probably going to have just enough leg that that would be difficult. Right. Now, I know people are going to say it's worked for them. That's for sure true. Uh, we just, you know, it's one of those things where uh, it gets it, inconsistent. It, it, it is a bit inconsistent, um, but it was awesome to be playing. And I was telling I think I told this to Abzi, it was awesome to be playing and hear somebody who really got to hear the Halo music for the first time in the game because they had never played Halo and just being like, right. oh, my God, this music is as good as everybody says. And that was a really fun time. Uh, plan is to work through those, but that'll be probably 2029 by the time we get to work through all those. There's just so many games coming out. 
Um, played a little bit of Hell Divers. I unfortunately I had the crash. Like I, I'm pretty yeah. sure that crash just seems to be systemic yeah, with yeah. the game. From what I've heard, everyone's had it. Yeah. Yeah. And I've then called it the baptism, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I had that crash. Then I had another that caused the PC to be so in unstable that I rebooted it. Wow. Um, then I had another yeah, later. That's... Luckily, wasn't that bad. Um, but I we had a lot of like disconnects and a lot of issues, and I refunded it, which is pretty rare for me. I just am I'm yeah, not yeah. usually that kind of person. But with this mm -hmm. one and with the number of games out, um, right? I it I couldn't even see. I, I was a little nervous. It was a tech issue. It sounds like we've all got it, which is cool in a weird way. It's cool because that seems like something they'll fix. So so that's awesome. Um, have you they, uh, have you seen the way they they did recoil in that game? By the way. It's very, very interesting. Very weird. I've never seen it in a game before. I didn't like know how they handle different. recoil. So it's like you got your crosshair, and usually with the recoil, your crosshair jumps up, right? And with like things like Counter Strike, the am the bullets go up, but like your crosshair kind of stays the same. There's a little bit of a kick. But with this one, there's a tiny circle and there's a crosshair the crosshair. So you're aiming the crosshair, and as the recoil is happening, the circle is going up. So that's where your bullets are actually landing. So you gotta like go to the bottom to the right a little bit so that the circle can hit the enemy it's very very interesting i don't know if i like it or not i haven't played with it but i've never seen a game do that gotcha um and so so i've been playing those and then i also jumped over to ori in the blind forest for um just for reasons uh, that i'll talk about later mm -hmm. nothing bad and nothing new coming up but to jump into that sort of mess around with a platformer that wasn't prince of persia and it's been a pretty fun time for games, it's still man. Gorgeous today. It's still gorgeous, and um, this is something we're, we'll talk about in a little bit. That like when whenever there's a game that isn't like nailing it, there's so many other games to go to. It's it, it is really yeah. pretty a, a pretty crusty time right now when it comes to like how how much time a developer has to fix something. And I think we're going to be seeing that you know as as service games continue and MMOs start coming that are new. MMOs that are old continue to be good. We just had a group of people in our chat who were like, well, Helldivers isn't working for us. Let's do, do Guild Wars 2. And I'm like, Guild Wars 2? That was like 25 years ago. And that was like, you're going. So that's more mm -hmm. people not getting new stuff and, and just sort of being like, ah, eh, you know, I'll get to this later, which I'm seeing in chat yeah. too. Some people just saying we're going to, we're, you know, going to hold off a little bit on some of these titles. And it makes sense. Got to be smart with your cash. It's going to be a tight year for a lot of people, I think. Um, yeah. Moving on from there, let's talk about the new Xbox rumors. So some of these are new to us, but not necessarily new in the last day or so. That's because uh, Abzi and I did our podcast on Wednesday. So the first one that popped up is that Xbox, and, and you know, some of these are sourced from questionable sources. Some are sourced from non, you know, whatever. We're, ju we're just going to talk about the rumors themselves. The first one was that Xbox would have an external hard drive on the new Xbox. Now, the PlayStation, doesn't the PlayStation... What are the, what are, what's PlayStation got currently for offerings? Because I've already for I've what? already got mine for its console. It's got PlayStation Five and then the discless, right? And the discless, yeah. And it's got a discless already. Okay. So the idea that Microsoft and the rumor that Microsoft would do this, I don't know about you guys, um, whether they do it or not, it it wouldn't be surprising a little bit just because they've already got you know they're they're sort of we're hearing about physical media going away from Xbox. Right. There were some rumors or stories yesterday that some smaller publishers who did hard cut hard versions have removed that hard version and it, it seems like a lot of the physical media stuff is going away. Um and they already not, have the Discless S, right? Series yeah. S. Yeah. Or... So you've got these you've got these games that are already you know already Discless Microsoft has I mean the layoffs some of those inv involved their physical group on this kind of a rumor, it's almost could just be a guess, but it's, I mean, it's something that I, I would, I don't know about you guys, I wouldn't be 100% surprised to see Microsoft mm -hmm. go just... Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Which and I, I mean, wouldn't like. And, I'm not... And all. I mean, the, just the, the atmosphere now is so much different than it was back in the day when they tried it and it went yeah. wrong, right? And it backfired. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. Yeah, that is true. And it's about all the stuff they tried to pull with that Xbox One original has sort of come to yeah. fruition slower. Have you guys noticed that too? All yeah. the stuff they talked about and it didn't work. And now we've slowly, you know, we're like, oh, we're there almost already anyway. Um, if people hated it, that it was online only and why not, you know? Yeah, yeah. Do you guys, I mean, we've, uh, Abzi and I have discussed physical on two podcasts now, but I don't know if you guys did. Um, and if you did, I apologize. But 
like Johnny, do you buy, you don't buy anything physical, right? No, it's funny. We were talking about it some podcasts ago that the most physical I do was actually like shows or movie, uh, movie. That's what it was. Know, That's what it was. Right. And stuff. Yeah. Because I, I do enjoy having those and the feeling that like, oh, my internet can go and I can still like, you know, plug in yeah. fringe and, and watch that. But I think games have uh, drifted away completely from the physical. I used to, and I, I own lots of physical ones, but I've over time, just the advantage, the convenience of digital, you know, you get it the moment it launches, you don't, you don't have right. an issue where like, oh, it's delivered on the next day or something. Yeah. Um, and then it, it turns out that most games aren't that special that I want to keep like a physical memento mm -hmm. of them. Like, you know, you know, Hell Divers, just, just as an example, it's a fun game. I, I don't think it's a game I would want to, you know, <laughs> have it on your you shelf. Know, like, oh, I played Prince of Persia. Yeah, I don't need a physical, uh, you know, representation of, of that. that. Representation <laughs> of that. I think there are some games I could see myself like, okay, I'm gonna get like the steel case and yeah. you know have something cool like to Final hold Fantasy, on to. I assume, right? Maybe you know, it, it might be, but I think even that I've, I've kind of come away from it because at the end of the day, it is just a box. Yeah, especially right. with some of these with just the disc and an executable on it. What about you, Silver? Anything? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm when I get physical these days, it's mostly for the PlayStation Five because mm -hmm. I tend to get physical games cheaper than the digital ones uh, in the on that platform. So that that's the main reason for it. Um, I used like Johnny. I used to be big on on physical media. Um, really, I. Like I look, I look at the physical media I have today, still like old PS One games and whatnot, and it just takes up so much space. Right. <laughs> yeah. They so, do. so there's there's definitely like a convenience factor to, especially because I mean the more you the more you collect of them, obviously the more it accumulates uh, in yeah. terms of space. So there's definitely a convenience factor to, to making that transition to digital. Yeah. Um, somebody said something that's really interesting here because it's sadly no longer always the case, which is uh, they were thinking that it's the ability to be able to resell trade um, or lend. But many of the physical games don't allow that anymore because when you put it in there, it'll sign it to that Xbox or whatever, or it's a code inside and there isn't a physical one, which it's just the the box and yeah, that's executable. how it was for PC games for 20 years or more. Yeah, where yeah. So, but I, I, I get the I get the idea, but uh, or how many times have you guys got a game that's a premium? It contains some codes. Those codes are used by the original player. So even if you could buy the game. Yeah, yeah. You probably don't have, you know, the star of Ublacon or whatever special weapon that was also given in that game. Ublacon. So for a long time, they've been removing and like, you know, clawing away at what what is in a physical, uh, you know, a physical game anymore. And the big thing they've been trying to do is switch over to that friggin, you know, statues and shit. And, I, you know, I have a couple statues, one or two that I used to buy or that I bought years ago. And then, of course some that have been given to me from uh, from game studios. And they're pretty cool, but man, I, I certainly wouldn't spend the extra premium to get them. Well, I, I mean, it depends Wolf, on what it was. I think Wolfenstein New Colossus was the first game I can remember that ever where the disc just had the Steam executable on it. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Where you put it in, it's like connecting the internet. Fighting D-Dog, <laughs> $2 super chat. Nothing beats the old school SOCOM PVE missions. Yeah, SOCOM was a blast. It was a very good game. Spec Ops gifted 10 ACG memberships. I mean, Thank you very much. Goes back even longer. Um, MM6D, $5 super chat. This question is for Johnny, but anyone can answer. What are your thoughts on the lack of camel toes in modern AAA games? Okay. You know, funny enough, there is some recent camel toe action in the Suicide Squad. Uh, Harley Quinn's, like, really? jokery uh, suit, the one that's, like, red and black. Oh, it, like the skin, that special skin for that one? Yeah, that, that one has a little, but, you know, it, it's just suggested a little bit. Nothing too untoward. Um, I think when you look at, like, sexuality and stuff like that in games and how they represent it, you know, you get the the occasional D&D &D game where the character's got a cod piece that looks like, you know, somebody's elbow. <laughs> and you just like, you know, like, like David Bowie in the Labyrinth or something like that. And you're like, come on, guys, come on. But... I mean, representing a person's physical body under something, if they're wearing, like, uh, what do you call it? Workout perfect. tights. Yeah, yeah workout tights. I mean, <laughs> both, both, everybody's going to have some 
junk somewhere. You know, there's there's the possibility of seeing right. something on those and or or tight shirts. You know, whether it be guys and you know the pecs or women and boobs, you you are going to see that kind of stuff. It is just going to show up. So I'm not. I, I don't know. I'm not too super bo- bothered about it. it. Sounds like uh, MM6D wants more. So once, I would say go more. to go to File Nexus, which just hit 10 billion, I think, downloads. File Nexus wasn't that the announcement? 10 yeah. billion downloads, and most of those are for the you know cute butts and and boobs mods. That's true. Or Korean games, they you know they love their yeah they, sexualized they, models. They love them. Uh, Abdi asks for 279 thoughts on a 78 XT for your first gaming PC. That's a good question. Does anybody do AMD here at all? Yeah, I do. What do you got for AMD? Uh, well, I have that processor for one of my computers. It's okay. It's very good. Yeah. Very good. It is, I would say some games work better with Intel, and others work pretty good with AMD. So it, it kind of like luck of the draw. With yeah. That. Yeah. And I just bought a. Um, sorry, I just bought a <laughs> uh, new GPU actually, and I was looking at at um, a Radeon. Um, so I was looking at the 7900 rather than the 78, but I heard good things about the 7800. So, um, I mean, I, w- I would, I would recommend you to look it up on like, look up reviews and stuff on online or on YouTube, what people have to say about it, impressions, pro- 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 possibly benchmarks. Um, but I've heard good things about it. Um, I ultimately went with the 470 TI super, even though a lot of people have it pretty harsh on that card, but, um. And I'm going to be installing it soon, I hope. But the big um, problem with these are just that yeah, expense is so high, you know. I mean, yeah, not not just expense, but for me, I mean, the reason I didn't go bigger than the 4700 because I've been saving up for a while um, was uh, space. Just I don't have the space for it in my cabinet. In the oh cabinet yeah, for my, for my computer because yeah, they've yeah, really become humongous uh like yeah. the the 4800 and <laughs> and obviously uh, bigger yeah. than that with the. Um, is uh, is is really monstrous so yeah. yeah um so so going back to the disc list and all that kind of stuff for xbox i could see them doing that i could also see them not i do believe that if you see all of the changes that we've tracked and you see it not only with xbox but you see it with many other companies doing digital only titles you see a lot i mean 90 percent of the steam games i buy will never have a physical release because they're not a triple a game anyway they're they're in that what do you call it ten dollar to $40 space where there's absolutely never been a plan. We saw Remedy switch over and, you know, go with Epic for their thing. And they talked about having, I, I think one of the things they had stated was Discless let them offer that game at a cheaper price. So for those kind of situations, it's coming up. It, it Does it suck? Yes, everybody would like the extra, I mean, uh, utility in whatever you buy. But I do believe that that rumor um, is, it's not out of the realm of possibility that something like that happens when they already have shown that that's sort of where they in particular are going. The other rumor, and I don't know if you guys have heard this one. So you know how all of these consoles for the longest time from the Scorpio back, the light, we've had these systems that are pros, you know, the pro system. And right. you, so you've got your PlayStation 5 and then they're looking at a pro. They did PlayStation 4 and a pro. Xbox did Xbox and then Scorpio. And now we've got, you know, the stories of the PlayStation 5 Pro the new rumor that popped up was that Microsoft had looked and decided to skip the Pro completely and instead release whatever they're available to release when they want to as a full upgraded system. And I was thinking in my head why that sort of makes sense. I'm not saying this rumor has any validity. I'm talking about why this makes sense. Um, they already have a Pro, and that's a Series X. I mean, they already have two systems. Yeah, They've got the S and the X, and I know it's not the pro in our minds, but I'm saying if you look at tiers and price-wise, in a weird way, they already stated, here's two versions. So this next version might be the other rumor Abzi and I covered on Wednesday, which is that there was a rumor that there's a super expensive one coming, and we were talking about, like, handhelds are 799 now, so the price range has ri- risen for, like, what people want to buy and play and do. And so the idea of them skipping a gen... That also is something that isn't really. It, the thing is, is I, I think, think this is the first time where all the rumors can make sense. I'm sorry. Have I think go this for it. gen, it's okay. The, the, I think this gen in particular needs more time. At least if they're not skipping the next gen, I think it does need a lot more time. I mean, there hasn't been a complete switch into the next generation. I feel uh, with, with with games being released, 
um other than like a few things like the ssd stuff we've seen very impressive things that are utilizing the new absolutely SSD stuff. yeah um very impressive but i feel like uh for the vast majority of things of what 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 games are nowadays i think they're mostly can be done last gen but they're just they're just we're just getting like 60 fps versions of that you know what i mean like we're not getting we're, we're only getting a very very few true advancements into like next gen gaming i think gta uh six is going to be like one of the those few where it's not going to run at 60 fps but it's going to have more uh <laughs> more uh you know i think it's more cpu intensive stuff in it probably yeah we'll see but i think this gen especially with the with the silicon sh sh shortage and all the issues um that popped up covid <clears throat> no one could see that coming i think this gen does need a little bit more time i don't i don't i don't, I don't feel like anybody's ready to you know move on to the next gen in the next two years yeah, I um, I think that here's let me explain to you why I think this is possible. So you're saying people, you know, next gen, maybe two years, people aren't really ready. However, the pros have sold quite well. And if they lodge this as a pro, but don't raise the price too much, I think that there is one thing that we all got screwed on this gen. We got shafted. We got absolutely taken out to the barn and beat the shit out of. And that's ray tracing. My yeah. firm belief is that one of these companies wants to be able to say, boom. Because ray tracing is, I love a normal looking game without ray tracing. I've told you guys sure. this, Abzi and I've talked yeah. about multiple games, Cyberpunk, all that, where we're like, dude, this looks great without ray tracing. This looks fantastic. Control looks amazing without ray tracing. Does it look better with ray tracing? Yeah, in some settings. But do you know what I could see? A player in the market saying, look at us, ultra ray tracing. And the difference would be pretty dramatic in any you know comparison um so i could definitely see one of the companies looking at that i, I, I it, it really does seem like that would be possible for microsoft and how they want to go and what they want to do we're not going to know until next week on these plans but for me if a company does a pro haven't we all bitched about the same thing here that the pros weren't powerful enough to always make us jump that's why i think if anybody's going to do it it I would rather see a full, I mean, with hardware support for ray tracing that is massive, that is like a thing, AI <laughs> processors on board. That's, that's what I'm, that's just because I've been burned on the pros, if that makes sense. Dude, you know what they should do think... for next gen? Uh, they, they should, they should, they should make uh, consoles that are modular enough so that when like new, Ship like in. a new, I... yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like a Nintendo 64 expansion pack, like have something. So that like in a couple of years within the gen, it's like, oh, this is like an upgraded CPU, GPU. You just add on this like fucking yep. thing or you like switch something around so you don't have to buy a whole new console. Bro, you know? imagine a, a console that looked like a console, but you can mm -hmm. go like clip and you pop out your GPU. And yeah. you, now yeah. remember, these are APUs, so you can't do that on these, but it would still sure. be cool to be able to be like clip. And now you've got, you know, you're, you've upgraded yeah. your 4090. Or just with... have one box, dude, and that's it for the rest of your life. Oh, dude. I'm sorry. The just, other thing, I, I can't up. believe I didn't mention this uh, yeah. to your point, Abzi, but um, I also forgot to mention frame gen. That many yeah. of these guys want hardware frame gen. True frame, frame gen. gen. Massive and frame too. gen's like, becoming could, such a thing. Yeah. Yeah, if they could get that to handheld and, and consoles, man, it's like it's game changing for sure. So I could see a pro being like, boom, let's go with this. Um, ACG, the problem is path tracing uh, needs at least a 4080. No, that is not a problem at all. It's a. It, it, this is something that I just don't think people are realizing. You can easily do these kind of things if you have, not easily, but you can make chips that support something at a lower sample rate, at a lower rate. I, I'm certainly not saying this will be equal to a 4090. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is consoles and the ability for them to do it. And there, of course, are ways to get these different systems running. For path this, tracing? For path tracing, yeah. For yeah, all of this stuff. Especially because, like, because even within path tracing, you can have, uh, you know, amount of bounces, you know what I mean? Yeah, and there's all rays, kinds of things that you, you know? can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm certainly not saying they're putting a 4090 together. But what I am saying is <laughs> I could see them looking the at something. 4090. The console yeah. 4090. Um, I absolutely <laughs> could see... Uh, the idea of not wanting to do a pro that I have bitched about and that we've all bitched about. I, I don't mm. like that idea. Go ahead, Silver. Mm. No, just uh, to your point that about um, somebody um, making um, ultra sort of um, ray tracing and, and going with that, we've also seen, I think, uh, a growing, maybe a growing tendency to to use that kind of language 
and to put it into not substantial upgrades. So I could see that as well. Yeah. Where like, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why people have been very, very critical of NVIDIA's super series for the 4000 series. Yeah. The because naming they didn't and everything. Really offer, yeah, because the super didn't really offer yeah. substantial upgrades compared right. to, to the base 4000 series. Yeah. Um. So I think sort of that that gap has maybe narrowed a little uh, in terms of how language is applied. Right. And maybe that's something that's going to continue going forward. Um, yeah, it, I, it, it's definitely something that, you know, I just personally... Where maybe the, maybe we'll see a slight improvement on ray tracing and they'll call that ultra and label that ultra and market it that way. And that's um, sort of how I see it. Um, but I do right. see them probably doing specialized chips of some kind where they, you know, because everybody can adjust their chips. We've seen that with PlayStation and Xbox where they have somewhat the same chips, but they've gone and done things differently. Speeds are different. Uh, CUs are different. I just know we've all been burned on pros. If he, uh, not burned. I don't want to say it that way because we've enjoyed uh, whoever's had a pro here in the podcast and who's ever had a pro. I'm sure there's been a game that you played on the pro and you were like, oh, I got extra frames or I, have, you know, what have you. But I do believe that a lot of times we look at those prices and we're like, wow, really? 60 FPS? And then later on when you play the game, suddenly you're starting to see 30 FPS on a pro. And you're like, damn, seriously. Right. Now we're now we're at this? So the idea of somebody trying to hopscotch it, it hasn't happened sure. before, really. But I do believe that it's possible that somebody could just say, hey, we just want to sell yeah, a I boutique agree. item. And maybe that boutique item wouldn't sell hotcakes. Also, did you guys see PlayStation's outsold Xbox two to one? I got to tell you guys, just because I wasn't tracking numbers for a while, I thought the number was way worse. Way, way, right. way, way, way worse. I just hadn't been tracking sales in a while, the exact like to the ratio. And when I saw two to one, I was like, oh, man, I thought I guess just because of the zeitgeist, I was thinking more like literally a tenth or something. I don't know why. It's just worldwide that was in my brain. Or... Um, it was, it, I think it was worldwide. I think it was worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're selling, you know, but not as much as their competitor, but that also, we have 55 TV manufacturers and they don't sell as well as one another. So you have to sort of look at that. What do you got? What would you guys want to see in a pro? Let's say, let's change this up. Uh, if I said that a pro was coming, um, a true pro, would you guys want to, is it ray tracing and frame gen? Is that the pretty, is that the pretty... You know, is that like sort of what you guys would want to see think, on a pro? I, I think what I would like to see in general is just um, because everyone everyone wants 60 FPS now. It's just there's no way around it. Everybody just wants 60 FPS now. So just the ability for devs to be more lenient and have more creative, you know, use use more tech for creative purpose, purposes, utilize more CPU, more GPU so that... Um, they they advance games in such a way that like in current gen systems would only be able to handle 30 fps but maybe the the pro would be able to handle 60 fps just to allow want it to allow the devs to make um you know cooler cooler games with with more ideas basically yeah yeah all right anybody else this may this may be a hot take but i don't think there's anything that a pro can have that would justify to me buying a you know another PlayStation Five, for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never bought a Pro. Yeah, since I, I already have one. the PlayStation Five. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, think about gotcha. it. I think Xbox Elite was the only one I I did. Um, but other than that, yeah, I've never. And never Silver, done that. did you ever do a Pro? Yeah, I did. I did all of them actually. Um, did you like the the Xbox One X and um, and the PlayStation Pro? And do you feel um, less burned than what I was explaining? Do you feel like you got out of those whatever it was that you wanted out of them? I think I got more with the with the One X, particularly playing um, like Flight Simulator on it. Yeah, um, gotcha. Like that was amazing, significant um, upgrade. Yes, for sure. Okay, that I makes felt sense. That was substantial. Where I felt like I got maybe less with the with the PlayStation Pro, but but the, I mean there were there was still a decent jump there, mm-hmm. but. Especially with games like God of War and stuff, um, where it, it added some some stuff, but but yeah, it, it was less. And and like like Johnny, I don't really see anything that could at this point because I'm really happy with where there where games on the Xbox One X and uh, Series X and um, 
and PlayStation 5 are at, like, graphically, technically at the moment. Um, so I don't see a gap there necessarily motivating me toward getting a, a new pro console. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like it would have to be something substantial, like a huge storage space capacity or, yeah, right. Or something, some kind of jump there, uh, that, that maybe could, could get my interest. Cause that's still, that is still sort of the, the bottleneck for me, <laughs> it, it, particularly given, storage space. given, <laughs> yeah, given how how much more space games take up these days, where most a lot of games now take up 100 gigs plus, um, so your one terabyte drive fills up very very quickly. Um, yeah. So seeing seeing a jump there, I think would be could be very useful. Uh, but but that's pretty much it. Um, my answer is somewhat the same. That, but I don't know if you were indicating this, so don't let me speak for you. But my answer is somewhat the same. That it would require. So a pro, a normal pro in the normal series of upgrades does not interest me. A right. massive uh, pro doing something, you know, massive might, but it would have to do something uh, that's crazy. And one of the reasons why also is I know people who buy a new video card just to get 15 extra FPS in a new game. And that video oh, yeah. card costs more than any of the pros we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at whatever resolution they want. to. So we do have a segment of gamers that are in that category. But for yeah, me, hardcore. for me, I've done most of the pros like you, and this is the time where I'm done with the pros because their return hasn't been as great. So right. th they're facing sort of an uphill battle right now where maybe some of us have done pros in the past or saw the pro increases and thought no, or you're like me where you did put the money in. You were like, yeah, it's an increase, but it, you know, is it worth it getting right. doubling up on a platform? The best bet would be to sell your, your base PlayStation sell your base xbox sell yeah. whatever and then like you were talking about you were getting rid of your video card to buy a video card is what i did yeah. i got rid of my video cards to buy a video card my dog is sick i'll be right back can you guys talk about okay. um storage size in consoles as well and i need to know the largest storage size currently in a single console because i think it's two terabyte isn't it or is it less i think so the max can somebody check that i, I mean cer certainly there have been special edition consoles i know there was a special edition console for the Series X. I think Gears of War special edition that had like two terabytes. I, I think I remember, but that's the most I've seen. Um, I mean, you can buy, you can expand it with uh, with additional uh, SSD drives or or whatever, um, optionally. But yeah, I think true. that's the most I've seen it come with uh, bundled with with the console. It's two terabytes. I thought it was one terabyte for the PS5. Uh, the PS5 uh, disc uh, discless. Did they have more in the discless than they did in the disc? I'm version? trying to to find that. Um, because I don't know about you guys. What? Let's talk about this. What do you guys think the storage space should be on a console minimum? Two tera. Two tera. Two tera. Yeah, that's where I'm at. That's yeah, exactly think, my I think, answer. I think mine as well. That should be the minimum these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two terabyte would be. Because they take, let's say, what, 15% for over-provisioning for the NVMe. So you're talking right. it usually... 1.75, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.75, yeah. If you gave me one... So, by the way, I'm not even complaining about this because I have no issue deleting a game and downloading it. I don't ever run into storage yeah, issues. But I do good internet, right? understand. That's right. A, yeah, but yeah. I do understand that worry and that bother. And I think two would be great. I think two mm -hmm. would be sexy it's like hey i think that's like the minimum like that's the ssds i get now it's just if i don't get anything under two anymore right right, right. yeah yeah and you know you look at the games let's say the average game is 80 or 50 for a console game you know an average big bigger budget 50 or 80 and they're growing bigger we've got ones that are 200 so i'm just looking at the average that's still right. crazy man yeah that's mm -hmm. the, you know it's like and and then you here's what's funny about the xbox in particular they have quick resume right well, if your yeah. hard drive's not very big, how many quick resumes are you going to be able to quick resume? You know, if we get, <laughs> let's say we get two 400 gigabyte games, which is not out of the question in the future, you're going to be able to quick resume two. And that's really not even quick resume. That's just basically switch game is what it should be it's called. Just so resume. Yeah. 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 Just start other game. So <laughs> I, I think it. it's also, uh, sorry, go on. No, no. No, I was going to say, go for it. Um, I was going to say, like, one of the probably the main cases for having a lot of games installed is if you have a download limit right on your internet, like you have a cap or Caps. something. 
because yeah. I know it doesn't worry me. Dude, like to you know, still exist, by the way. In America, Absolutely. I think they're very. They're prevalent. They're, they're not prevalent. Oh, they're they're shit. less no? prevalent. That most are okay. going away, but then some companies brought them back. So I should say. Oh. They definitely happen here more than other places. How about that? So there's we'll say it that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I haven't come across them, the places that I have lived, but certainly I hear from people that it does happen. Uh, I, I would say outside of that, I don't have a problem re-downloading a game. You know, if, if you say, oh, it's going to take a while, maybe you have a bit of a slow internet. I simply don't have that. It, you know, I just let it download and it's all good for me. Right. So. I, I like to keep it clean and only have like one or two games that I'm actually currently playing. So, so one terabyte, which is what the PS5 has now, which comes down to way less, right? Because they shave yeah. off a bunch yeah. for, <laughs> but, uh, but it still works really well for me. I think also it's a combination. If you have s slow download speeds, it doesn't matter what your storage is because that's also an issue. And if you have fast yeah. download and a cap, then you're doubly, now you're hit, at, it's like, well, I can download it, but I have a cap I have to choose. I've seen caps as high as two terabytes, and then you really do have to think, like, that's a lot, but it's yeah. getting smaller, and it'll get smaller. And MMOs, updates, uh, uh, one thing that comes up a lot of times is updates can be gigabyte upon gigabyte. And if a company, if we want to have companies patch our games all the time, then we need to make sure that, like, the consumer can also patch the game without running into a bandwidth cap. And I have seen people hit bandwidth caps due to patches, and that's pretty... Like, it, it's not even the console maker's issue. That's completely separate. That's the issue of the infrastructure and wherever you are. Yeah. Australians, we talk about it all the time. They've got internet at, like, you know, 7 megabytes a second. You're just like, okay, I'll see you in 16 hours when that's downloaded. They get every game early. By the time they're done downloading it, we're all playing it, and they still haven't got started. Yeah. Like, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> um, real quick, I Super Chats. Me... Hang on oh, just boy. one second. Yeah. Uh, Hey, Seuss, $5, met a dev from Turtle Beach Studios at my job yesterday. He had his dev sweater on, so I, could, I couldn't help but say thanks as a gamer. Turtle Rock. Turtle Rock also did Evolve, didn't they? What else has Turtle Rock done? I don't track them. They Turtle did. Rock. Yeah. They did Evolve, I think. Um, I'm sure they did something better, because I, I don't think, unless he was teasing. Ice wasn't Cold Cabbage. Also, wasn't, Go ahead. wasn't Turtle Rock also Left for Dead, or... It is. I just checked. It's Left 4 Dead, yeah. And I don't know why I wasn't blood. remembering that. I think I remember and the bad one. Strike series, it looks like. Oh, there you go. I don't know what I was thinking then. Um, Ice All Cold right. Cabbage, $2 Super Chat. I feel now, more than ever, it's time to get a PC. Mm. Well, let me just tell you. I mean, PC... PCs are easy, right? PCs have a boatload of their own problems. Like, there is absolutely yeah. no... It used to be where we could say, hey, man, we have a console. We're not going to run into problems. And that's gone. And, and the pricing is just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. For, yeah, so it's I, just... I was, go ahead. No, just for... I mean, mo, for, for most people, I mean, but like me looking at GPUs, like here, they're at... Like, if you're going to the top end, you're between two yeah. and $3,000 at the very least. Um Damn. And and even like like Radeon, which is usually or AMD, which is usually known as the more affordable option, like yeah. the price gap between them and Nvidia isn't really that big here, uh, in Denmark. Um, mm. So like there's a huge expense there. If what you want to build is like a gaming PC dedicated to gaming, uh, that's that's gonna run you a lot of money. Yeah, uh, like four, five, five, like three, three to four thousand. Um, yeah at yeah that's crazy dollars. and uh you know pcs on some games can be future proof for a while and then on other t you know you'll be playing a game with your you know newest processor and suddenly and you were saying like some games run better on intel some on amd and you'll have that yeah, you'll have yeah, somebody uh, yeah. have a problem with amd ch and they'll be talking about it and then intel you'll have them you'll have a game that throws all the threads onto the efficiency processors and so suddenly they're getting terrible yeah. frame rates and you're like okay or driver issues yeah the best right? way to play this game is to turn off all the extra threads you bought and you're like oh my god seriously that's why the rumor that intel is looking at dropping dual threading and going to just processor cores was interesting. Um, mm. you, you know, that I, I read that somewhere where somebody was saying, like a benchmark popped up or something like that that looked like they were going that way. And it might have actually turned into something real in the last couple of days. I just saw it when I was randomly reading tech and stuff. You don't have to spend 4,000 to beat consoles easily. Yeah, true. True that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't have to spend 4,000, but you're spending way more than a console. Maybe not 4,000. Well, not on every game. It puts yeah, it 
into perspective when you look at the pricings of like current GPUs and they're like above, you know, quite a quite a bit above the price of a full console, like a PS5 or yeah. that's I mean, just even, a GPU. Even if you would go for like a, a, a low range PC, gaming PC here, that would still be one to fifteen hundred one thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Well and then you monitor versus TV, you know, are you gonna buy oh, a monitor yeah. as well? You're gonna buy all your yeah. other stuff. So yeah. Um I like to play on all the same screen just because it's easier to review. But <clears throat> let's see. Uh PCs have always been costly though. It is what it is. Yeah, it is. I mean it's your sports car version of gaming, if that's what you want to do with it, is game. I mean, it's also the multitasking wizard. I mean, the yeah. best thing about having a PC including the ability to double click the epic shortcut and start it even though people seem completely you know <laughs> apathetic to that idea but no it's going to be it's going to be interesting guys these rumors are probably a lot of going to be put to rest next week i don't think xbox can win uh with this announcement i've stated that before i think that no matter what no matter what they say and no matter how they do it even if they were like what are you guys talking about we're not going multi-plat at all we, you know this is a new hardware release like the rumors were wrong um, there's so many issues with communications and stuff in this, uh, uh, the particular zeitgeist that's going around that for a while, at least that's just the issue that they're dealing with. And it's one of the things that we're, you know, it's one of the, not weird, but that they're going to have to deal with. Um, I think these rumors of, com of new hardware is particularly interesting also because we're, you still have the cloud for a lot of people. You still have, and that hits bandwidth caps and that, so it's like Xbox might say, Hey, here's, you know, we have the cloud. It's like, right. But that doesn't fix my streaming issue. Like, it does, yeah. it, you know, the streaming issue is still there. So, and that brings us to the handheld system, the rumored handheld. Um, Abzi and I, and I think even Johnny, we talked about this last week, I believe, um, is that like, you know, the portal just allows streaming internally. And I would see any Xbox system, obviously, allowing for you to stream internally, you know, from your console to it, as well as the cloud. And, um, I think that hits in some ways, but man, the price would have to be really good. You need a nice screen, right? OLED for sure. You'd need, well, I say OLED for sure. I'm just saying that's what we would want. I shouldn't say it that way. Yeah, I think the convenience of it has to be so high because right now it's already very high with a phone or a tablet. Yeah. Like if you have, you know, if you're set up with good internet or good Wi Fi, you can have a pretty good experience with most games in and i say pretty good because you know it depends and we've all had some issues yeah but to say here here's a you know here's a dedicated thing i think yeah that you know the screen you you want a good screen but it, it almost feels like you need something extra that you don't get in some of these other options like something yeah. the phone or the tablet can't do. Maybe it is just the comfort, you know, of the controllers. Like the portal you were saying is really comfortable, whatever other shortcomings it has. Yeah, the portal is very comfortable. It's one of, it, it is absolutely one of the most comfortable, um, like handhelds I've ever used, but it is also the most restrictive handheld I've ever used. So what you trade for in comfort you get in lack of real flexibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just feel like, especially on the system where we were joking, where it's got an airport mode, it only makes sense to me that any kind of device that you have that streams from your console can stream from the cloud too. And they've stated they could, they just haven't done it yet. But I'm going to tell you, if the bit rate is the same, it'll run into the same problem Xbox Live ha or Xbox Cloud has, which is just a, a terrible picture, you know. And then you run into, if you increase the picture, bandwidth caps. Or speed of your it's a, it's a situation where you're rest you're waiting. Microsoft has felt this way for a while to me. Like they're waiting for the rest of the world for some of what they want to do, and it never equal it never. Maybe the 360, you could say it aligned, but it feels like they're always late, or, or you know, it's never at the exact right time. But who knows? I could be wrong. Maybe everybody thinks you know perfectly at the right time. Um, Anything else for the Xbox rumors and PlayStation stuff that's been popping up? Or uh, we, we'll talk about Switch in a second because I want to ask you guys about that. But uh, my my just to add the piece because I know you guys already talked about this in oh, the last feel free. podcast. Feel free. Yeah. Um, I almost view it as uh, an evolutionary pressure. You know, when you look at the kind of like evolutionary things, where if everybody 
coordinates there's a certain strategy that would work for everybody and it would be fantastic and the analogy here is if all companies went multi, you know all plat like multi platform where you can play all games from everybody everywhere in a way everybody would win because you simply their, their games would sell everywhere right um but because you have these competitors like sony who are still sticking to their guns with you know we're going to have our exclusives and that's going to be a big part of our business model that would be predatory towards whoever tries to do full open multi-platform right. in a way like you can't survive in that ecosystem if you if you do that i think like you guys were talking about so i think unless there's a big coordination where you could say okay we're all gonna open up right and we're all gonna benefit from it um uh, i don't think that can work yeah, it's a really good point if you're doing hardware, right? And that's the question, if you're that's doing hardware. True. So if Xbox were to drop hardware and be like, we're just the biggest third-party publisher in the world, then it's no longer whatsoever. A, it, it, they're just owning the biggest third-party in the world. I think, I think they're also uniquely situated, Microsoft, in, in their relationship with the PC and the PC community. Yeah, like, for sure. Tying into that and that, yeah. that entire ecosystem that I think that it actually, it makes that, it makes it uniquely possible for them to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Where, we've talked about some, this for sure. Somebody else wouldn't po probably be able to like for the reasons Johnny pointed out, but I think, yeah. but I think that that PC infrastructure does give Microsoft the potential to do it. Yeah, no, I agree with that. We talked about the knock on effect of having, if you're playing your game on the PC, you're still on a windows machine for the most part. Right. And they yeah. have other threads in there that they're using from their other departments, which yeah, is I mean, just completely different. There. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, it, the only thing that we've seen close would be, I mean, it's not even close, but the Steam Deck and Steam OS seems to be genuinely yeah, right. really yeah. well well liked, which is very cool on that. But um, yeah, it's an interesting time, man, for sure. I think next week, especially when all of this gets aligned, some of the stuff I've heard, some of the weird rumors, you know, a lot of these are not going to be true. Some are going to be true. But I do make sure to tell everybody that you know in the next couple of years i think your console entire console system ecosystem is going to look dramatically different even if we didn't have any rumors coming from microsoft i truly believe that there are so many changes and layoffs and adjustments and position changes for companies and huge problems that hit that they're making faster changes than they ever would because you know mm -hmm. whether it be sales and uh, and worry whether it be Square stating we're changing the entire way we're developing games. I mean, like like we joked last podcast, that's Square saying that. Like, of all the companies in the world that you don't expect to say, you know, we're like buckling and changing and stuff like that. We're, we're, we're going to change. And I, some companies won't, right? Rock or Rockstar's not going to change. Those guys are still going to take 8,000 years to release their game. Do you guys see that they, they were saying that, like, not only is this the largest gap, but it's like, what is it from GTA 5 now? 10 years? Or is it seven? Damn. I think it's 10. I think it's 10. It's 10 years. Yeah, it's 2014. Is that not wow. crazy? That's mind blowing, man. It's mind blowing. It's almost like George Martin or some of these writers. Who yeah, take right. Like, you know, Dude, like so true. Years for a book. It's so true. So true. That's exactly uh, what it's like. It's basically everybody's chopping at the bit, going, "Where's this new book? Where's this new book?" And George is like, "I got writer's block, guys. Uh, you know, uh, here, here's my little comic that I'm going to write yeah, on a, a half-ass uh, blog." Uh, and then also, in my in my opinion, hard to blame him given the backlash to to oh, like yeah. to you. The, end of yeah, game the, the stakes are yeah. possibly high. Yeah. And similarly for Rockstar, <laughs> by the way, because the the standard is so high for them now that if they release a really lackluster GTA, that might almost like yeah. you know well, hurt the uh, brand. Johnny, very... they in the last quarter they sold five million GTA fives. Five million. <laughs> it's it's it, still like one of the most sold games. Who's buying it, man? Like we joked in the Discord, yeah. who doesn't have it's that like, game? It's new babies coming into. It's like just babies popping. They have. In. They probably have DV, or they probably have old DVDs of GTA Five that are so old that they have DVD rot, and people are just <laughs> you know replacing why? their old version. I think Asia you know and uh, some other places are exploding too. Go ahead, sorry, Abzi. You know why? It's because well, we, you know, we all know like new, new players are joining the space. Absolutely. Constantly. Yeah. 
And the big reason is there's nothing like GTA 5. That's absolutely mm. true. Can't find anything like it. That so. is true. And every attempt to be like it has cratered. Same goes for Red Dead 2. Yeah, has cr well, yeah. That I mean, I think Red Dead well, yeah, that's very specific. A western in that way but no sorry no, uh, yeah yeah i meant in terms yeah yeah, yeah. western is very very specific. yeah that Would seems you, e that's GTA almost well doubling specific. down on the genre yeah yeah, yeah it's doubling yeah. down yeah yeah but, but you GTA, are right nobody yeah. succeeded like right the closest they, is what yakuza which is nothing yeah, like GTA, it's but, absolutely but, the closest and it used to be saints mm -hmm. row and saints row did yeah. the one thing we used to have saints row true crime yep all that shit. and yeah. saints row was so close guys saints row somehow took what seemed to be the biggest poke at GTA by saying we're still we're funny we're more we're more out there because of yeah, GTA Four and were, yes I know but edgy. they were <laughs> when they, they were, were edgy and somehow yeah. they lost the entire way point yeah and point and they lost that goal and that is so unfortunate because guys it would be such a great world if I was saying dogs are great it'd be such a great <laughs> world if I was saying. Saints Row is coming out in 2024. GTA 5 is coming out in 2026 or 25. Mm -hmm. It would be mm -hmm. such a fantastic time to have a competitor that, and it would push Rockstar also to release more quickly. I truly believe that. And I think we, I think we can all joke about their long release date, but don't you guys always think they sort of take advantage of it? It's like, mm -hmm. it would be nice to have them be pushed a little bit because I don't know if the internal pushing works as well. I apologize for my dog. He is absolutely losing his mind, but I'm going to I'm going to try to get him to quiet. Shut up. Shut up. Chip. Chip. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. You can disagree. Work. GTA 5 is not that great. First of all, I didn't say it's not that great. I said it's the a one of a kind. And second of all, I mean people are buying it, dude. There's millions. You could say it's not that great, but you know, it's, it's Oh, GTA 5 is great. Why? Somebody saying yeah, it's not obviously great? it's GTA 5. G yeah, yeah, someone just said that so I was like, okay, well. <laughs> oh, dude. No, 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 no. I don't think there's any way. I don't care that I don't love it as much as everybody else or the role players. GTA 5 mm -hmm. is legitimately not only a classic game, and it's classic in every way that is truly that you could even identify classic. It is also yeah. an absolutely fantastic game. Now, is it fantastic 10 years later where some games have slightly adjusted and done shooting better in a third person game? Maybe not, but it still has all the other stuff that those games don't have. It does, dude, that's, I mean, sure. even I wouldn't argue it and I don't even, even love the game. Even the attention to detail is still, it's, it's, you know, it's beyond belief. Games it's beyond belief that, as a game. And, cer and certainly aside from those things, on to, to Epsi's point, there's nothing on the market after 10 years later like GTA Online yeah, as an ten, online in experience. 10 years or as an online years, experience. Online. As hey, an online silver. experience as well. Hey, silver. Yeah. Yeah. Here's something that is weird and mind-blowing when you think about it. Uh, Red Dead 2 couldn't even equal GTA Online. Red Dead 2's online wasn't even able to do yeah, anything close to GTA 2's online, online or GTA 5's. Huh? Yeah. So yeah, the, they just their own company like, they just gave up on it. And the the, the one attempt that kind of tried was um, APB Reloaded, if oh, people remember. Oh, yeah, that. I remember that. Was that. A complete, I remember that. That was a complete disaster. Um, oh, man. Oh, that game, Come on, dude. man. That Dude, <laughs> that, and that's the thing. It's a super good point. I'm really glad you mentioned it. When, when we're talking about hardware cycles and you're talking about PlayStation, you're talking about PlayStation Pro, you're talking about all this. If those games are running well... That's one of the other games that I've seen that even though it ran like shit on some consoles, it did not matter. I know people putting 700 hours in one that went down to like 22 frames per second during fight. It just didn't matter. It, it, it's one of those games that not, it, you and, saw. And, that. Go ahead. And, and, and just to, to, to elaborate on your point, not only that, but on PC, going through loading screens that were 10, 15 minutes sometimes yeah. on the online yeah. and still sticking oh through god. it. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. my God. And, and the, the online I don't miss that. had and you something know, that, that you didn't find anywhere else. Exactly. The, yeah. And that's, it's, again, it, the pull to that. And that's where I would love to see, a, you know, these pros or whatever. You know, if they're going to do ray tracing, that's great and everything. But I would like it to, as Abzi's point was let developers make something i've always wondered what's holding other other than money resources time and expertise what has been holding other developers from doing something that is even slightly like gta and i think those are the big things hardware's one where maybe the expertise cost. isn't as much there but yeah cost that's what i said yeah cost oh, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. talent yeah, yeah. true talent Six thousand fucking devs dude yeah six thousand devs 6, 000, 6, 000, I don't but know we could go so far as to say <laughs> We could go so far as to say some companies have tried their own version, which I think we can all agree. Ubisoft has their own version of that open world thing. 
and mm-hmm. they've gone away from online. Yeah. I've been talking about this for years. I am sort of surprised Ubisoft hasn't like tried some kind of true online version of their games. They got the multiplayer. You know, they've got that kind of stuff. Yeah, the, close, they, so. Like the closest they have is the um... Assassin's Creed multiplayer. No, but no, the, not what um, I meant. Uh, the the X Games one. Yeah, true. Uh, Re- that, that was... Republic Riders Republic. Yeah, Re- Riders Republic. Yeah. Steep. That's yeah. kind that's of the fun. closest. That's sorry, I meant an open world though. Uh, sorry, I meant in uh, their version of Far Cry. They, you know, they haven't right. done a, a yeah, yeah, like yeah. an no, online no. version of Far sure. Cry. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, I mean, can you well, imagine what that would look well, like? We're getting. I mean, we're <laughs> kind of getting that now with um, Skull and Bones, but that's mm, kind of. Yeah. How how did you any of you try? I, it, I, I like how that just sort of shut us all down for a <laughs> yeah. second. Go ahead, go ahead, Abzi. You were asking if anybody's uh, tried it. Yeah. Have any of you guys tried it? No. <clears throat> Isn't it, is it out? No, the beta is out or something. No, right? it's the not. Beta. Out. Yeah. yeah. It it is it, an it open releases beta. Mar- March, I think. Yeah, it is an open uh, beta. Beta. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or is it, per, it? is it this month or is it just March? testing it with no people <laughs> playing? <laughs> I think that, uh, you know, I also wonder because that survey that we'll talk about in a bit, you know, we're seeing so many people go to Unreal. It's like, what are they going to offer people to uh, for efficiencies when they make games and stuff like that? I'm pretty excited for that kind of stuff. I'm pretty excited to see what people can do in this gen, though, like you guys said, because the idea of a pro is great for the Xbox if they want to do that. The idea of a pro is great for the PlayStation 5. I mean, great, whatever, great in the sarcastic way. But my favorite time in gaming was never the release of a system. It's usually three years in when they do their sequel. So it's not Mm -hmm. Halo 1. It was like Halo 2 and 3, you know. And it was like when Gears 1 was great, but when they really started to learn the system and you got those efficiencies and you could tell, it was like that moment where things came together. Usually really good. Instead of Halo 3, I feel like the third one is usually pretty shit, like Dead Space and... uh... Yeah, Sometimes no, I would agree lose. with that. I would agree with that. Like, that's w- a good point. In my opinion, even this happened with Mass Effect as well. In my opinion, the first one usually has the most uh, defined atmosphere, and it usually goes hard on the atmosphere. Like, if you play Demon Souls, the atmosphere I I think is waste. Like, it's super strong. Um, and then and then and Dead Space one, right? And then the second one, they 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 stress like the the new mechanics and features and go more into gameplay, but the atmosphere kind of like goes back a little bit. And then the third. <laughs> So with a lot of games, I don't know what the fuck they do. They're like, okay, now it's co-op and it's like a cover shooter or something. I feel the same way with movies, though. I've seen that pattern a lot, yeah. I've I've seen seen that that way with movies, I feel like. One and two are like one or two sort of finishes up and completes the feeling of everything, the characters. And then you get that third one where a lot of times I'm like, what is this? You know, I just, yeah. or, or Matrix where after one, you were just like, oh yeah. my God, you know, what, <laughs> no, what is, Matrix, you know, where yeah, everybody yeah. loses their shit. But I, yeah. it, it, it's fine, whatever they do. I, I love the idea of something being super powerful. In fact, I like it more than a, a general baby step. I'm very, the, I'm very tentative on the baby steps, the, especially in the console market. Right. The baby steps have not, I would say, returned my well they've returned my investment but not nearly as much as you would hope for a pro if so you know and i think they package shit in pros that's really reductive at times you know a little bit better you know a little bit better uh hard drive maybe a different controller and then a, 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 maybe they shrink it up a little bit it runs a little faster you know it's just it's little so for a, a, when you see it's different than when you see a person who's learning to skateboard and a pro when a pro shows up, they're fucking grinding, doing 360s, backflipping. Our versions of the pro are more like you've been skating for two years instead of one. It's just, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay, yeah. you can go down a hill without crashing on your ass. You know, that's uh, that's our versions of pros. Um, And this is the same thing with our controllers, the elite controllers, the misnamed elite. You know, these kind of things where they're just ripping us off for the pricing. That kind of stuff. When it comes to game futures, hardware, and things like this, um, we've talked about it in the past, what we want to see from controllers. I don't think we're going to see any changes. In fact, I think it feels like the only thing we might see is a force feedback gamepad. And there's been a lot of companies trying to look at that and figure that out. But I got to tell you guys, this is just me straight up. Man, do I not want a force feedback gamepad where that stick is pushing back against my finger. (laughs) <laughs> right no me neither yeah i i don't want that i, I don't get, know i get enough from it from a steering wheel yeah right right like there's something about just your thumb versus yeah. a wheel there's yeah. more strength and ability than there yeah. is in that thumb to hold back an engine that's like 
push me, push me. You're like, I don't want to push you. I want it to be fluid and get your stick drift fixed. Fix that shit. Then, then worry about the, the force feedback stuff. Yeah, because if you think about like what the triggers are doing in, in the PS5 controller sometimes, like some games, they really push back, right? And yeah. you, like there are mini games where you have to find the exact... Like, right, the exact point where you're... Level. Five uh, pounds, and balance it. I, I've, I've been very torn on that, whether I hate it or it's kind of cool. But I, w I would say because it's, it's a very brief interaction, I'm okay with it. And it's something that it's sort of cool. But if it was something that was happening continually, I just, I wouldn't want Can that. Can you imagine and that? Your bumpers are pushing back, your triggers, your thumb pads. All the time. Everything and is like... And when you talked just now about the, the analogs, like the joysticks thinking about having that in the analog sticks i just i don't want any of that well okay so somebody brought up gyro and i've i've messed around a ton with gyro i mean the legion has mm -hmm. it built in a lot of the handhelds have it built in now handhelds i hate it because i don't want the screen moving to me that's ridiculous <laughs> that makes absolutely uh, i it's i hate it but i get why people like it uh i would say gyro is a is probably a possibility to be in all of them because it's not super expensive to put in and they could use it for some games. I like gyro better than I like the force feedback triggers. The idea of gyro and finesse, you know, aiming and stuff where you're aiming with your thumb pad and then and then moving a little bit. So did Johnny freeze? Think... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dude, that oh, is amazing. Okay, now you're back. That was you were like, ah. Um, in in any other improvements you guys would want to see on the controllers that are really going like like that far? Force feedback or anything that you guys can think of? That would excite no, but you. I want a pressure sensitive keyboard with so I could like so I can press force feedback w keyboard like to walk. No, 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 just so oh, I can press w like analog. To walk. <laughs> yeah, pl press yeah. lightly to walk. Yeah, yeah. I've been playing some <laughs> games for review where that you know, where it, it, you got that typical one person's walking and you're like, oh, no, I, think, oh, no. I think maybe just an, an ability to try and, and think creatively. Like, I think gaming controllers in particular have been sort of mired in a um mm, yeah i know what you're i know a, where you're in the status of of one consistent design that, okay. that sort of that reason really hasn't changed much over 30 years i would say yeah even um, nintendo in terms of it. in terms now of nintendo like posi positioning <laughs> of like analog sticks and stuff like that right. um well, i think you could try maybe try new things particularly for the purposes of like accessibility and stuff that like n64 that, that could be interesting and could be could work in different ways maybe where um, the middle hand comes up to control the 360 <laughs> controller and then you got your hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean i don't i don't i don't i don't have a specific idea but it's i know just you that, don't but i get your like drift the, i mean for sure the, the basic the basic um layout of like the both the playstation controller and the the xbox controller haven't basically changed really why all that much are, are back in, buttons like, 30 years why yeah. are back buttons restricted to like pro versions of controllers why well, don't no, they just 20 have years that? sorry yeah i don't know i think the back buttons thing should be built into all the games right yeah that's just such a no-brainer like you don't if you're playing like a shooter or something you don't want to remove yeah. your thumb from uh, the... dude it's uh, not yeah remove your thumb it's also like you get a game where you want to hit the start and you're sort of moving your thumb to hit the start where yeah. it'd yeah, be yeah, nice yeah. to just have it under because i do uh, i have the add-ons and they're great they're great for you know just adding some buttons on the back you can control i yeah, think or, that that's you know, a huge example, huge difference uh the suicide squad has the default like dodge button being l3 so you have to like push into the analog oh stick. into the analog stick yeah which to me it's it's a disaster like to because the to dodge, dodge is like a timely thing yeah oh my goodness you know it's a timely like, thing. like i get it and, for sprinting maybe if you yeah, toggle so a sprint but for me that doesn't work at all right but the um. other buttons are already mapped so having the back paddle for me i can now use that you know i just map it to l3 and that does it for me. So it's it's great. Also, some Souls games where, you know, like you have to sprint by holding the B or circle button. That's also sometimes problematic because then you have to do the claw so yeah. you can move yeah. the camera and hold. Well, if you can use the back paddle for that, that solves the problem, too. So it's, doesn't it's that also bother you? It, doesn't that also bother you, Johnny, that we're looking at console games still now that still many of them won't let you friggin change the button? Com it'll be like, oh. 
It'll be like yeah, profile yeah. one, two, three. And you're like, what are you fucking talking about? Just have profile one, a savable one for me and let me change every button. <laughs> yeah. I want to use the start button for Dodge the, if I want the to. The four button layout for forever. We're not yeah, never going to go the four button layout yeah, or, versus or six. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely yeah, true. Yeah, that would be cool to see them. But I don't think that they will do that. I think what I would like to see is an ergonomics shift which is that currently the way you hold your controllers, there's a, a oddness to how the thumbs are versus like if you generally relaxed, it would actually have the sticks on the outside like a googly-eyed character in Yakuza. And I don't know if that would work, but I would sort of like somebody to test it where a relaxed, because mm. when, when I hold it after a while, I'm like, dude, this really is not at all the way a person you know, would, would rest. It would be nice to see what a controller at rest would look like, but I bet you the moment you did it, there would be thousands of memes. Can you imagine the memes for a googly-eyed <laughs> controller where the sticks were where they would normally be if you rested your hands? It would be hilarious. But That's true. I, but, you know, I think they could have, like, uh, two versions of it or maybe even three depending for, like, hand size and stuff. Yeah, maybe they hand have, size like, would a be great. Chonker, yep. You know, because some of us have, like, long fingers or big hands. And Just call it could, the fat I, I with would... PH, man. The fat. And you get the one yeah, that's, the like... Fat, like yeah. You know, something to grab onto and that it's it's, it's tanky, it's like yeah. heavy and stuff. Like, I would go for that. Extra <laughs> weights in it yeah. for no reason, just to make you feel like it's controllable. Um, yeah. yeah, moving on from the, or, or or finishing up the rumors discussion, I uh, honestly, I, I think one thing, especially when you look at third parties and, and stuff like this and for new consoles and probably also these guys don't want to switch their controllers for new versions stuff because all the game makers use the same thing. So you would not yeah. only be switching your hardware, you would not only be saying, boom, here's here's like whatever whatever thing I want to do for my hardware that I release. And then you're also on top of that stating every third party would need to adjust and change. And I would love to see a ton change because I actually find the controllers to be pretty poorly designed when it comes to the face buttons. I think that four is not what I would like to see. I would like to see six return to the Sega Genesis and the Street Fighter you right. know, it's ABC, XYZ. Yeah. Uh, and they were very yeah. comfortable. They were very formed. I actually found them to be quite comfortable. I think that they you would be able to do that. And that would be highly enjoyable to have that. I think the back buttons being absolutely like a requirement in the future should be done on the $49 controller. You, you know, the basic mm. controller. Like what you get in yeah. the box, boom, you you have these back buttons. And, they, and you can adjust them inside of the Xbox or the PlayStation's OS. I think in minimum. a way, six buttons could be a simpler, like in practice, could actually be simpler than four, because with four, what ends up happening is that you sometimes you need to, to do two things in one button, and whether that comes down to holding it or, you know, doing something or four different. four things, quite frequently. Yeah, or four things. But if you have like, you know, two extra buttons, you can now have a, a dedicated jump button and then a dedicated interact, you know, like yeah. whatever it may be, it actually like makes it a bit simpler, I think, rather than having to do like L3 and like hold buttons and stuff like that. Pretty soon we're going to get a controller that's got like stuff up. We're going to we're going to have like F1, often. F2 on the edges of the controller now. We're going to, yeah. you know, somebody be listening and be like, that sounds like a great idea. You get this controller, like 800 buttons. Like what was that one? The Jaguar. You guys remember the Jaguar? Ooh. The Mm -hmm. that, the, that had like 16, I think, on the front of that controller. It was ridiculous. It had like the numpad at the bottom and then your normal... It's like an MMO. Yeah, yeah, it's like an MMO <laughs> mouse, you know, which yeah. I've had MMO mice and I use like four buttons tops. At that point, after that, I'm like, eh, that's or too much. Or the good much. old NES one that with the hard edges, hard corners. and. Oh, <laughs> dude, that thing that thing was rough on the old hands, man. You'd be playing yeah. that for a, a certain especially amount of time. Especially if you were playing like, track and field, man. Track and field especially. Yeah, was it was rough. I, I was never a fan of, of the SNES controller too much because of that. Um, and their thumb pads had the edges on the directional. They had these like oh. sharp edges and always it always just really, really ended up hurting That's my true. fingers. Yeah, pretty um, grating. Anything else for um like what we would like to see in this announcement? Is there anything that you guys are expecting? Is there any expectations? I know you don't track it as much as maybe me and Abzi just because he was in this podcast. He, he doesn't track it as much as me as well. But overall, is there anything from Xbox you guys are expecting in this announcement or sort of hoping that they will do or caring? Because if you don't care, it's also fine. I mean, I, I think some people are apathetic to all this. You know, I keep expecting or hoping to see a... a a Nintendo like 
collaboration where maybe they say like here's game pass on the, on Nintendo, the switch yeah on the switch you know we've talked about it maybe at least the ability to like stream directly into it or something like that i would love to see that and given that they've talked in the past like you you know nintendo looks really good if we could do something with them um but that you know that never seems to be possible but right. i think that that could be a really good partnership that would like uh make a difference in in terms of competing with sony you know that would be a really big differentiator especially i think also because they really don't overlap that much mm -hmm. i don't think True. um nintendo and microsoft i don't think they're i don't think of them as like direct competitors in the same way that microsoft and sony are right um like nintendo is sort of its own separate niche <laughs> platform um yeah. in a way that, that sony isn't or microsoft isn't um like it's 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 some kind of a separate market segment that doesn't necessarily overlap all that much with with Microsoft and Sony. I think that's very fair. What about you, Abzi? Anything you want to see at this event or any thoughts? If you have none, it's fine um, too because we've already no. Come. Just uh, just fucking just 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 give people information so they rip stop the bandaid off. Speculating, dude. Just you know, just concise, clear information, just so. You know, and then people are still going to speculate other stuff. We know they are going to be right. I yeah, we do. I will say you know, find find out. Yeah. Find new new stuff to to just come out of come out with on their own. Just be like, just yeah. Out of yeah. Well, ass. yeah. That you know what this means? Um, I will yeah. say that uh, I, I don't know if you guys saw this, but on the 29th of January, um, it was announced that iTunes had changed their um their overall rules and now game pass can be on itunes which if you guys remember that was a oh. huge problem because it's a store within a store and itunes mm -hmm. had a, a, a rule against that and that had caused horrendous back and forth between itunes and microsoft and that happened on the 29th and suddenly we start seeing these rumors three days later and i was like does this actually mean you know like what does this mean did this uh, accelerate their plans where they were like okay we can get on you know we can get on itunes now we can do all the stuff we want to do there because for a while that was a huge deal and it got overshadowed by Activision and purchasing Activision. It got completely overshadowed that Microsoft and iTunes had gone after each other quite a, a number of times for trying to figure out, you know, how they could get on iTunes. So it would be interesting to see if, you know, this is accelerated discussions at Microsoft because they've seen all this kind of stuff because financially they're doing well, including the Xbox division. So it's, you know, but doing well versus, you know, making you know serious <laughs> amounts of cash is a completely yeah. different thing right um i'm gonna read the results of our poll everybody so do you folks plan on getting a pro system 445 people voted and it was yes 31 percent, no 69 percent. and it was as high nice. as 85 for no but it's dropped yeah so i think that that's fair i think when you look at it 70 you know that that's probably a, and then once you see it that might go up or down right on what on what you're what you're noticing but let's talk a little bit more about some other rumors so nintendo now multiple times has stated little things that have made me wonder if the switch 2 is going to be what we think it is because they just stated again that they're they're really tentative nobody should plan on like them iterating exactly that there's you know it, that they want to make sure that they sort of switch things up switch things up that was not on purpose. Is there you any the sound, switch sound effect click? Yeah. Is there well or lack of it with the light? Remember, you could you couldn't right. even yeah, take yeah, the yeah. Joy-Cons yeah. out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is there like, could you see them going completely crazy and doing something like we do not expect at all, where the Switch Two turns out to be? I mean, because yes. some of this, like, what I mean, would it's, that it's, look it's, like? It's, it's Nintendo. I mean, they went right. from the GameCube to the Wii. <laughs> right. <And> then, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I, I w or, and the Labo. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily put anything past them. I don't. Is there anything that you guys way. could see? I mean, what would they, what would it look like if it wasn't a Switch to, like, you know, a handheld that, I mean that seems to be their most popular their most popular thing in the world sold 130 million or something like that it's like a ridiculous number what would you see what would you guys expect from a switch what have they done to switch things up in the past they did the Wii U or the Wii right i think the Wii was a huge switch was the yeah, gamepad yeah, really uh, 
also from the Game Boy Advance to like the DS. Um, yeah, there, the, yeah, the but it's still handheld and stuff. Um, oh right, yeah, that is true. What were we gonna say, Abzi? I think it's just gonna be a better better switch this time around. I think it's gonna be a switch two where it's just uh, they're not. I don't think they're gonna change again. I think they're at the very least gonna have the same cartridge input. Uh, I think they're gonna have backwards compat because they have like a huge, 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 huge uh, consumer base. Um, the the only reason so so prior to the Wii U, largely the you know like the Wii you you know could play GameCube games right. and the Wii U can play Wii games. But with the Wii U didn't have a large enough consumer base, and they were like, "Fuck it, we can just switch it completely." Start over. Yeah, with this one, I feel like uh, it behooved them to just make a like a more powerful switch, maybe a better battery battery life, and maybe like a new gimmick, maybe a new gimmick. I don't. know What, what would the gimmick, gimmick be? be though? Yeah, exactly. Like, AR like a ten hour battery life, <laughs> or AR <laughs> where you're able to put stuff AR? on the table with so your like amiibos, and, like, and yeah, you're looking, you know, to sort of like here's the, you know, strap it to your face. And have it VR as mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. which is, I think, what Pimax did, or one of the VR companies tried what that. Did they I don't do know. With well, the DS, they did bigger screens, bigger DS. Dual screen, they did dual 3D. screen. Yeah, but that, like the iterations of it. Oh, after the, it. yeah, they did the XL, right? The fat. Yeah, they did yeah, a fatty. The fat one. They did yeah. a 3D one. The, the 3D, 3D, right? They yeah. did a light, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> uh, that would be it, right? I mean, I'm mm. sure, uh, other than their custom ones. I and they think did a that's 3ds pretty... xl uh like larger 3ds yeah they did yeah that's what i was calling the fat one do they did they've they done a couple do that, fats the 3d screen again uh try that no uh, 3d <laughs> is uh, 3d is dead now 3D, 3D, is dead. 3D is dead. 3D is dead. It was it was so cursed because you needed the exact <laughs> angle. You had to you had to like cross your eyes a little bit. You feel like yeah. oh wow they did they did they did <laughs> kind of wow. zoom it a little but, but yeah it does um, it like plays with your eyes because you don't use any glasses or any, anything right it's just like kind of your your eyes yeah. focus into it okay which, well which make it like kind of let yeah. me ask you a question Abzi so I've used the Toby uh, where it allows you to aim with your eyes and the new one in in particular works insane. And mm. we we now know that that's what a lot of the VR headsets do is they track your eyes so they can do 3D movies and 3D games that aren't 3D. Could you see mm. them doing a camera and like do 3D on a screen by just you because it doesn't need another screen now. We saw that with uh, the new uh, one at CES was shown where it's a camera and it does a 3D because it's tracking your eyes. Can you imagine playing a DS game or sorry, a Switch game where it's just tracking your eyes and it does 3D without an it doesn't need another screen. I mean, if, 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 if anyone's gonna do it, it's probably maybe Nintendo will revive revive the three D stuff. I don't know. I, I, I maybe. I, it, it just I mean, it seems I like a gimmick tracking. unless they made it not a gimmick. If you get my drift, yeah. like they were yeah. like, this works, and here's three. Uh, here's Mario sixty four two, right? We're calling it Mario <laughs> oh, or wait Mario sixty four three D. Yeah. 128 and, Mario 128 yeah 360 it would have to be so good though that when they showed it and here's the greatest part guys Nintendo would lose out from that point on forever in the future with being able to show what the game looked like on a screen because mm -hmm. your screen would not do 3D so just like HDR at that point forward they would never ever be able to show you the actual representation of their title in any video because there would be no representation available to you because you would be watching on a different screen than them. That is a huge PR hit. You know, you, to be able to say yeah. this is 3D and a person's watching a 2D YouTube of it and they're like, no, it's not. I see nothing that's <laughs> no, 3D sure, on that. Yeah. What do you, yeah, do you get my drift? Sure. You, yeah, yeah. Every, yeah. From like, that, this is VR. HDR. Yeah, like, this, this is HDR. HDR. Oh, this, yeah. is, this is an OLED. Like, what? <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, you're it's like, like but I'm watching, it on, I'm watching on an LCD. Yeah. You know, hey, here's like, a review for the OLED TV. Look at the screen. It's like, uh, yeah, oh, well, right. I'm, I'm still using an OLED Yeah, or like VR, where it's very hard to show what it's yeah, like yeah, to it's, look at. Yeah, right, right. So, and I'm assuming Mario, or sorry, Mario. I mean, we might as well go. The home of Mario. But I'm assuming those guys look at it and they do decide that. They do look at those situations and go, True. this is not yeah. going to work for PR. It's not going to, how do we tell people about how awesome this is? And you guys are right, VR. Do you know what people see? They see what they see. They don't ever see you seeing what you see. They see a headset that looks like googly eyes on your face. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, there's some guy who's buying coffee or banging on Pornhub in their Tesla wearing VR. Great. That's you know, a couple of people having really hot sex in a VR car, but it's like the number of multiple people who can't translate that is 
99 percent. you know there's only one percent who so i guess my 3d excitement just well but you you said eye tracking and i think eye tracking is also really good if it's well done because you can point to stuff on your screen on your screen and then you know like select an item by looking at it and then just pressing a button no more instead of like having to yeah and I, I think the people were saying that the new Apple VR does it really well. Um, I mean, I don't know, uh, but either way, that could be something cool if you can actually point that stuff. With For thirty five hundred dollars, it's going to need it because it doesn't have joysticks. It doesn't Wait, have but then controllers. Ha- what if you're just looking at something and you don't want to choose that menu option? Like you have to like blink to select it. I don't know how they do it. Abzi. What if wing twice? There must be a Abzi. system. <laughs> if you or need what help, if, what if they do a connect? You know, like they do the thing where it's like, yeah, oh yeah, where and, and Apple, the Apple headset does that, where it's hand tracking. Mm. It's quite well. I have the Quest, and the hand tracking is that it, mm. is not terrible. It it, huh? it works, and for thirty five hundred dollars, whatever tracking they have in that Apple better be perfect. Like, I mean, that shit could... better tell you where to put oh, your hand. Dude. Like, it, yeah. it, it, you you said have Think Vision, where you just think about it and it works because that's a well, lot of it money. It could also be that like. You know, for for the switch, you like you hold a button, and then it starts tracking your eye. And when you let go of it, that means you're selecting where you were looking in a way. So it's like you, yeah, you, know, you, you can't play process. any anime games though, because your eyes are gonna like go to. Uh oh, they'll try. Oh, so <laughs> let's talk about one thing that Nintendo is huge on privacy. The yeah, idea of right. a camera staring at a kid's face is probably every oh. anti-law that Nintendo has internally. True. You know, nah. they, you, these guys are guys who yeah, are like, here's a, friend I, I think they still use friend killed, codes. I think, I, yeah, we're killing, we're, we're chopping up our ideas as we go. I'm all excited, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, man, we're going 3D, <laughs> no, dude, this would be great. And it's like, None ah, of it works. Yeah, none yeah. Of it. Well, as I was telling you guys a couple of weeks ago, one of my friends was was setting up business stuff, and they were, they were doing it remotely. And him and a friend had been just because they worked together, they had had a Zoom up, and the Zoom was showing the person. And they could see each other and they could see if the person was busy. And when he tried to roll it out to the team, the team was like, dude, this is my house. You have a camera facing into my house. It's not the same as at work. You know, like my wife could be walking by the camera. You know, there's all kinds of privacy concerns that have nothing to do with the player. It could be behind you, people tracking somebody behind you. They see somebody's parent who calls in sick and that parent is there playing the switch two with them and suddenly they get fired because they or supposedly the faked the sick call. the having an affair with the babysitter and the oh camera catches it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you see get the idea. Chopping them up, chopping up. No good ideas <laughs> it le- left unchopped here. Uh, I asked people what they uh, expected from Nintendo and launch controller issues. That's that's what people mm-hmm. expect. Uh, Nintendo needs to make it native, backwards compatible, and improve the online functionality. They mm. absolutely need to. Will they? I don't know, but they need to. 1080 gaming at least. Uh, new shoe controllers and a new new shoe controllers. I think shoe? he wrote that wrong. New, I, I think that must be something else. New controllers and a new format for cartridges <laughs> or, to avoid backwards the, compatibility the issues. Or, oh, yeah. God, yeah. Dude, those things. <laughs> I actually quite enjoyed those. Uh, yeah, any other, too, the nunchucks were Dude, cool. the nunchucks were sort of cool, man. They were sort of, yeah. they worked well enough to fool you into thinking they were working well. You know, because yeah. we weren't accustomed to everything else. Yeah, they were. Mm. Yeah. I remember playing with a friend. He said something along the lines of, well, these aren't tracking perfectly. And that was the first time I had noticed it. You know, because I was having a good, I think it was a po- boxing game. I was like, dude, I, this is fucking working well. And he's like, mm, <laughs> not as well as you think. I'm like, thanks, piss ant. You just ruined my, <laughs> ruined my good day. Um, Let's see. Let's move on from there. We actually do have stuff to talk about that isn't about rumors and things like that. We've got, uh, I want to talk to you guys about something. So Helldivers 2 comes out, right? Yep. And got some bugs, got some crashes. And they had, I guess, game dev had stated he thought somewhere in particular they had stated something along the lines of we passed certification, we're ready to go. And his question to me was, how in the hell does a crash that apparently happens to every single person or feels like happens to every single person, how does that get through certification? And it regarding updates and game day one drivers and that kind of stuff, do you guys feel that certification is the failure point and that we just need more people on cert do you guys feel that the audience is just so vast that certification can never catch up there's just so many iterations of pcs this is on this one's on console and it's had a couple crashes yeah i think it's not even necessarily 
a result of the police PC platform. I think it's also just a result of technology being inherently faulty at times or unpredictable, where unpredictable things can can occur that you might you might have it set you you think you've set all adjusted for all the variables and you think you've accounted for them. But then all of a sudden you find you go live and you find no, you haven't. Right. You thought you, you had prepared for it, but but you hadn't properly. And I think I think there that that is a definite aspect to it as well. That that's just inherent to, to technology. Mm-hmm. Um so so I think it's really difficult. And and it's and again, I mean, the more variables you introduce, the the more likely it is that something's unpredict unpredictable is gonna is gonna occur. Yeah. What about you, Abzi? Any cert or just so many, or is there something else I'm not thinking of? Like, how do they get well, by with some of these crashes we're seeing in games that just seem to be, you know, how do we get cert Jedi Survivor? How do we get Jedi Survivor? That's my question. <laughs> how do we get how right in in that it's a buggy mess and that there or were so Jedi many Punk. issues on release or Cyberpunk. Like, do you think it's the, do you think it is the uh, certification that's, and they need more people? Or do you think that it's because now we have such a vast like audience? Like QA? Yeah. Um, like what would need to change? I think um, games are just, they're, they're huge in scope now. They're becoming very, very big. And um, with that, the, the gaming industry is also becoming quite big. You're seeing more investors and more publicly traded companies. So, uh not only do they have the freedom of, you know, not only do they have, do they not have the freedom of like just releasing games whenever they want, especially if it's a publicly traded company, they have to answer to someone. Um, although with Jedi Survivor, I, I heard that EA told them, asked them if they needed more time and they said, no, let's just release it. That was said, uh, yeah. But, you know, they want to meet uh, fiscal year expectations. They have certain timings for certain things, you know, all this business crazy shit. You know, they've determined beforehand when's the best time to, like, release their product. Mm -hmm. Um, There's always... There's, there's, there's something difficult, I feel like, with anyone creating anything, um, let alone, like, devs creating a game where where you're never going to be, like, happy with the final product. You're never going to be like, okay... If, if it's up to you, you're just never going to release anything. I feel like if, if it's up to you to like work on it as much as possible, I think, um, you know, uh, due dates and, and time limits are very necessary. Um, I think it's all about like managing that time. And and um, uh, you, you're seeing a lot more com- companies now sacrificing uh, quality to to churn things out faster, for sure, uh, to appease investors. Uh, sometimes it's biting them in the, in the ass. Sometimes it's necessary. And sometimes you get, you know, messed up shit you know like uh like uh like last of us pc port or or, oh, or yeah I forgot about survivor that or right whatever what have you yeah i think it's a lot of elements that are just uh you know it's very difficult uh, man i want to like talk to a dev about you know just like i feel like their lives are just chaos you know just right. like oh fuck we have to be you know we have to do what the board of directors tells us you know because investors blah 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 but also we're gonna you know a lot of people are going to get pissed off. You know, I bet the cyberpunk devs were losing their minds at the time. So, yeah, it must be, must be very difficult. I, I doubt anyone's, like, super evil and just like, ha, Yeah, I wanna, no. <laughs> I want to no, see my yeah. game fail. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I, I think it's just a lot of hardships. Anything uh, for you to add, Johnny? Yeah, I think the issue is that, and, and here, you know, you need to correct me because you know more about this process of, like, certification. But the way I understand it is that this is internal so it's not like a third party coming in to certify your game, right? It's it, like it depends. The company you itself can do. is doing QA. You isn't can do it? external. You can do external. You can. Yeah, you because, can. Because um, you know what? What we tend to do in like uh, software engineering outside of games is um, sometimes you will have like a third party come in, and there will be like a standard that they will measure you against. Mm-hmm. And they will say, you know, did did you pass this audit or or no? And whether you pass it or you don't, that means something because you're being measured against this objective standard, and right. it's a third party measuring you. It's not yourself, right? Saying, yeah, it's great, we passed, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's accountability there. And my understanding is that, you know, each company is responsible for their own QA. Now you're telling me maybe that's not the case. But I don't know if there is quite the same sort of like standard that you can say, well, they passed this right. 
you know, certification. And that means something that's like your game doesn't crash on startup, you know, maybe some baseline yeah. guarantees like that. Because I mean, the, the bug with hell divers, it, it was predictable. Like we, everybody who was jumping into the game, we were saying, you're going to crash when you put on yeah, right. you know, the armor yeah. for the first time. Yeah. And I, as far as I know, everybody had that. So, you know, that's just reproducible, right? Right. Yeah, dudes, uh, this is one of the things I think is that uh, the ability to get games and download a game super fast and play it, and there's so many games, and that means if there are certification teams you can hire, which I know because I have worked for them, takedowns worked for them, I know for a fact, um, they can only have so many people working on so many games. So at some point, mm. let's say you're in a busy time, if all those teams are gone, then your certification or your, not certification in the way of a console, but your QA testing might go to your internal people who that might not be their strength or what have you. You know, you may, I've, I've definitely heard of stories of developers using friends and family for sure. 100% oh, yeah. absolutely for sure for somewhat sizable games. Just being like, you know, a bunch of people can play this. You know, please don't leak it. You know, you don't know if that's going to happen. But it does seem like there's so many games and so many things, like Abzi said, so many things going on in games that you're just like, oh, my God. Especially with and, the sizes and, you know, yeah. the scopes of the games start out, you know. And the different hardware that everybody has. It's just a fucking nightmare, I believe. I also sometimes wonder if a QA group, because the ones I've worked on weren't story-based in-depth for the testing. I've always wondered how a QA person would know if a game was screwing up in the story later on. If Because mm -hmm. maybe they don't know the story as well. They may yeah, know it. Right. They may even have a primer. But you're like, it mentions Triss, you know, Witcher 3, let's say. But it yeah. really wasn't Triss. It was the other, it was Yennefer or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. The player or the, the QA guy is, you know, trying to check yeah. that he can jump 60 times without it crashing and isn't really reading that or, you know, there's there's yeah, a lot, man. There's yeah, yeah, it's there's... insane. It's insane to say blind, like blind spots. Yeah. Yeah. And you can also have blind spots from the developers who are like, oh, everybody understands yeah, this yeah. point. And then the player plays it and is like, what am I doing right now? You know, we've all played that game of with course, a tutorial yes. that looks like it's built. And looks like it's good, and then you're like, "What? I can do this? Why didn't they ever mention that? You know, like, what? Why did I not know this would have made my game so much easier?" Uh, that's yeah. interesting. Um, you guys have anything big to talk about with Hell Divers in particular? Since we're talking about cert, we're talking about games um, that have come out. Yeah, I mean, just to go by, I mean, the thing that really sort of made me happy was that, honestly, even with the change in perspective, it still plays a lot like the first game, really, uh, at heart. Uh, like I played the first game a lot back in the day, mm -hmm. um, and and so and kind of off and on in the years since. Um, but it, but it really feels like Hell Divers still. Um, like the 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 perspective has changed so that now you can see further ahead, where you're no longer confined to like the the, the screen, the screen. But you can't see what's behind you anymore, so you can't see enemies right. coming up, ambushing you, or or whatever. Where where you could you could potentially see that in in the old game, but like stuff like the stealth aspects of avoiding patrols, uh, checking the radar, pinging enemies, stuff like that is still still the same. Um, it, it it's still really really fun to play in a tactical way, um, and and especially as you ramp up the difficulty and you start facing tougher enemies with more varied strategies and stuff like that, um, mm -hmm. and the variety of stratagems you get for calling down airstrikes and artillery strikes are still fun to mess around with and play with. Um, like when you basically call down Armageddon on your enemies is really fun, really satisfying. Um, and the enemies are are fun to fight. I mean, I I still have only fought the bugs as of this, as of this point. I haven't fought the the cyborgs yet. But like that was one of the fun parts. Was the... like, um, no, uh, the insects, the bug okay, enemies, okay. not not the tech oh, not the bug bugs. bugs. Right. Yeah, okay, <laughs> no, yeah. Um, but uh, the starship trooper bugs um, are are still fun to fight. Um, and and I really enjoy that they retained some of the. I mean, p part of the aspects that made the co-op in Hell Divers, the original, so satisfying was the way you interacted with your squad. First of all, there was like the friendly fire, mm -hmm. which is which is such an inherent and integral part of the game, and it's also why I think it's so difficult to like implement something like bots into the game 
because imagine the frustration of getting shot by yeah. your bots like <laughs> <Right>. every <laughs> every right. three seconds or so. Man, right? that would suck. Uh, yeah, or team killed. Um, so I think that's that's a really difficult part of it, but um, but stuff like one one character one player if he if you aren't good at shooting stuff or the aspect or that or that aspect of the game. You can pick up support stuff, so you can like somebody can pick up like the rocket launcher, and you can grab up the rockets and then feed the rockets into the rocket launcher to keep him firing continuously, or you can run around with so and support like a flamethrower or whatever it is, um, and still be supportive and still contribute to the squad in other ways. So you you can you can take on all these different types of roles within the squad, and there's a space for that within the game. And that's still there, I find, even even from my early impressions, and that's quite satisfying. I loved the 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 the, the combos to call in yeah. air yeah, support yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that, that felt that, that was awesome. Of fight, that that sort of old fighting game, sort of gaming stable, arcade stable. Yeah, that really, that was that, amazing. Really yeah, it looks fun. It feels fun. I thought that was great. What about you, Johnny? Is there anything that you have to add? Especially about as Hell you Divers? start oh, to memorize them. Oh, right. And you start getting good mm -hmm. enough that you don't need to like look at the screen. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. And you can just punch him up. What about you, Johnny? Um, I think it, it plays really well when you're in a group and you can communicate. Yes. I, my experience outside of that has been really poor. Um, but that's also because I'm still learning the game, right? That's so also totally it, fair. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, I would just say I know, I know it, it might be hard to implement bots, but I think it, you know, quite frankly, it needs it. I think that would be a really good way to learn the game without having to um, have a squad like sort of handhold you and and you know right. babysit you and and teach you the basics. If I could just learn them by uh, by having these bots mm -hmm. just covering for me, that you know, just some basic fire. Um, would really help because when you go in solo and you try to, uh, yeah. it becomes completely overwhelming unless you're really good at, you know, just uh, using the stratagems, like point, like super precise and stuff like that. So I, yeah, I just feel that's a bit lacking um, and that's a shame, but when it works and you have a squad, uh, it's almost magical. I love the, like the tactical, you know, you're like okay we're going here even the positioning is tactical because of the friendly fire you know if you're in front you're gonna prone or you know you will uh instinctively have to position in a specific way and all of that stuff i, I find really cool so there's a lot there i just think you need the right conditions for it to shine in my opinion for sure in that way I mean, then including not crashing to desktop Right, Abzi, would you say that reminds you then of GTO? Because for the longest time, GTO needed the right, the right exact situation to succeed. Do you remember, What's like GTO, G uh, get the fuck out, the shooter that is, yeah, isn't that? That's, that, that, that's exactly how I feel about the game. Like I, um, you know, bots would be great uh, for that type of game, but I feel like w w w you really do need a squad. Um, I, I didn't. I thought it was just a looter shooter. By the way, I had no idea what Hell Divers was. Um, until I watched a lot of streamers play it, but it requires so much strategy, and, and you know yeah. everyone has these loadouts, and 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 there's a lot of depth to it. Um, and I feel like uh, it's like an unsolvable issue where where if you don't have like a dedicated squad that want to play the game at the right time, they all want it. Right. Um, right. It's I just get, yeah. you're fucked. Because uh, playing with randoms, I heard, is not that great. Um, it's never that great with a, this type of game, in my opinion. Um. So the only way I would play it is is with a with a full squad for sure, because it's either it's either it's gonna be too simple or too you know too tactical or something where you know I don't know I don't know how they balance that. Yeah. I will say two or three players can still be very fun, but you I mean basically solo is gonna be very underwhelming, um, but two or three players it can still be a lot of fun. We're definitely see these games. It's it's interesting you guys talk about this because if you take what we just said and then you merge it with service games as a whole and you merge it with all that, this game has like six things going against it, which is weird. You know, it's just like there's, and I don't mean going against it and it's failed, it's done well. I'm saying going against it like, oh, you probably need a good team. Solo isn't that great. There are no bots. Yeah. It is a service game. It is a it is not a looter shooter in the same way that you, so there's all these things that oh, yeah. like are different about, which is good, by the way, those are, those are, 
those can be good things, I guess. Go ahead. That does remind me. My, my, my main point of criticism about the game is I'm not a huge fan of its new progression system. I think it's that's where I, that's where I was going with my comment. Actually, yeah. was so, was the progression yeah, system and the how it works and it's I think really you obfuscated. It is. That's, uh, thank you. That's what game dev was complaining about. You couldn't see some of the stuff or the costs of. And he was like, "Dude, I don't even know how to plan." It's and not I immediately wish, transparent. I, uh, yeah, yeah. At, at a glance, um, it's it's kind of difficult to kind of understand. Oh, it kind of works a little bit like a season pass where you have to progress up through these tiers, right? Uh, a little bit, and it's just weird. Um, like like in the first, in the old game, you would uh, basically just collect samples and stuff to use as a currency, and then you would level up and gain access to weapons and upgrades that you could then buy. Uh, you can still kind of do that. It still kind of works that way. It's just the infrastructure they set up set up for it is is really, really, uh, like, uh, it, it's really, really obfuscated. It's it's not obvious at all. To You really have to cr kind of dive deep into it and to try and figure out how it sort of ties together. Yeah, how, how it wants to that. do it. Uh, what were you going to yeah. say, Abzi? I think one of the things I found that is kind of a solution to the four man problem, uh, especially if you're doing, you know, difficult content, because I know right. it has difficulties, um, is is like dedicated Discord servers and maybe like uh, like different tiers of people who want to play different difficult content. So you can find like a bunch of people on that same wavelength, maybe, you know, that's something I've seen in other games that's worked. I, I've, yeah. I've done, I've tried that for Tarkov a couple of times. You know? It is just interesting that discord which is another third party thing which then if that goes down you're screwed but it's like we're adding another tool to these games yeah. we're adding something Unless it has else like an in game like the ranking system or something where it matches you with people of your same prowess. but you would need you would need what you're saying which is almost personal talking with the other person to verify they are playing at your wavelength because they might be a rank and it might yeah. say support person then you play with them and they shoot you right before the extraction like johnny said and you're like oh yeah. he's a griefer you know um yeah. they, they're difficult and i will say that here's my big problem with the game that i have noticed and i'm not saying this is a big problem with the game that is real i'm saying what i've noticed so far um it already looks like for me it it has a a repetitive loop that is noticeable even in the first like 15 minutes of the game and uh if you like it you'll like it and if you don't it's going to be a bounce pretty quick and this is what uh, yeah. one of the complaints towards suicide squad is that some people like the cutscenes, the story but then they were fighting the same guys and that's def it's absolutely true it is repetitive and it does get boring um what i noticed with this was when you add the obfuscation on top then you add the fact that you know i don't really trust other people people that I haven't talked to, you know, I don't, because these are longer co-op missions as well. I don't know if you guys have tracked them, but I feel that they are right on the raggedy edge of long, you know, you can have a four, you know, a 40 minute yeah. thing. If if you have it, one it, it, screw it can, up or one dickhead, that's a long time. It can run from like five minutes to 40 minutes, depending yeah. on what your objectives are and stuff. Yeah. Like that, and what you decide to do. Yeah. What I like is that they don't uh, require you. You don't have to play this game. Like, it's one of many. You know, that's the thing is I've mentioned GTO and there's all these other games of this kind. So it's like if if all this stuff appeals to you, then now you've got your game. You know, now you're set. Now you're good to go. And yeah. then and then if not, you can switch it out and do something else. But uh, I've, I've liked what I've seen graphically. I've liked what I've seen with all the ways they do uh, the upgrades other than the weird not showing you the prices and things like that. I thought that that was very odd and something I couldn't really track quite easily. I couldn't really figure out why they were doing it. But overall, it seems to be successful for them and it's doing well. And I'm sure they're going to get these stupid, you know, uh, 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 the patches stuff. By the way, I don't agree. We talked about this prior to the podcast. I'm not a big fan of, yes, I know games online always have issues. I'm not a fan of saying they've, they always have issues. So therefore... I think yeah no no you 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 still like, have a you certainly still have a right to complain about it and be angry about it or, or I, whatever yeah I or just expecting the game to work out of the box yeah yeah and I just feel that this one in particular they knew a lot of people wanted it they had a, a huge outcry or not a huge outcry but a huge uh, PR campaign they were doing really well on all of their indicators I just say spend the money up front man and you know suck it up it sucks but it's like suck it up make it sure that people can at least get into the game um, which luckily here. Luckily, I think most of our problems are not getting into the game. Other, we get the disconnect, but I've seen a lot of people get the disconnect after playing. Also, right. I firmly am starting to believe 
that I've seen a pattern here. And that's three-fourths through the game. When you've got about three-fourths through the way, you are much more likely to have a crash instead of at the starting in the first three-fourths. And I'm wondering if it's a memory leak style situation or if it's like where all the things have been killed, things are being tracked, and there's this weird little thing that just has a higher chance. Because I'm hearing a ton of stories that it's like right when we were getting ready for extraction. And I heard that. I was talking to people this morning. They played tons of games now. And almost all of their after the first crash crashes involved end of that level situations. None of them were in the first half of that situ- uh, of that mission. It was always in that later half mission. Almost like something's happening right there. And it's like, you know, this is the crash. This is, we've seen it before, right? Memory leaks and stuff. We, we know that right. can happen in games. Um. Looking at Twitter real quick, and some of the questions, we'll get through them real quick. Christopher Ruaz says, how do you feel about the rumors of PlayStation making another handheld? There are rumors about that? Really? There are. There's rumors about it. Even after the portal, there's now rumors of a true handheld coming out. And I, my distaste is my rumor. Or that's the, my the thought. The PlayStation Portal owners are going to be so mad, dude. I know. That's my thought is true distaste. <laughs> like, like, I, do, I do not understand. Did. You yeah, just... You released this and then... <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. No, that, I mean, I, 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 I just do not understand where the Portal sits, if that even happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, other than a, a that, maybe $99 that would feel device. beyond shitty if you just spent, you know, 200 bucks or whatever on the Portal. You kind of deserve you, it, though. <laughs> Oh, oh. Well, okay, yeah. No, what no. Are, what but it still sucks. Money? I'm just kidding. I'm uh, kidding Stephen McGlynn says, just wanted to say thanks for the content. My father passed away this week, and listen to you guys let me escape from the shitty reality that life can be. Seriously, My thank you. Thank brother. you very much. Yeah, sorry to hear that. Tipsy Tater Top, Witcher 3 had vast open worlds to explore, but narratively pushes you to ignore everything because your daughter is in a life-or-death situation. There are some games that sync their open world with a narrative that doesn't ramrod you through the main quest. I think uh, I think Red Dead did a pretty good job. I mean, you could still run around and do stuff, and you knew things were happening to certain characters. But I think Red Dead mm-hmm. did a fairly good job making I, what, it feel what does like. What mean? What, 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 what was games? The question, what though? games where the main dialogue and the main story make you feel like the time makes sense, like it syncs up correctly? Versus, hey, my child's mm. dying, and you run off and come back, oh. and the child's still there. But like, what open-world yeah. games have synced all that correctly? And it, I think it's rare, but I think Red Dead's probably uh, one of the best. We, it's a very Witcher 3 game. kind of did as well. Which one? It's a f- Witcher 3. Well, he, he, do you? Because that's his... He, I, I mean, I think he's saying he where doesn't think it does. For, yeah, but, but I, to me... But you think me, it, it did? did? Where you're... I mean, yeah, you're looking for Siri, but the other... Like, you're, you're going through these areas in... As you're searching, like through the Velen swamps and through Novigrad, and then mm-hmm. to, and then to Skellige. Um so to to me, it made sense. Um, okay. I think it really depends how you play Silver, because my yeah, experience no, for sure. was like, I I I just went off and played Gwent for ten hours, and, and didn't right. feel any of that. Yeah, and that yeah. in game is many days, so it's a feeling of like, well. I'm just parking this very important quest yeah. to play cards, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think, what, what about you, Abzi? Go ahead. I think it's a very difficult problem to, to do, especially for, like, these large open-world games that have a ton of side quests and stuff, because um, nobody wants time limits. Like, if, if there's a side quest that's urgent, you don't yeah. want, like, a, like only a 15 hours to do it. Some, some quests already do that in some games. Unless it's, like, a game built around the time management, like Persona, you know what I mean? Persona, everything makes sense where you only have... You know, two, three things a day to do activity or in the morning, rising. in the afternoon, at night. You know, Dead Rising, you have the, the time limit. But uh, for the large majority of games, I feel like uh, I think people do people, uh, they probably prefer like the freedom over having to do stuff in the time limit. Um, unless like they, they, by and large, there's yeah. like a lot of quality. Yeah. I think there's, uh, you, they could do it with like some QOL stuff like, add like certain dialogue where um if you took too long they'd be like well what the fuck dude you just you took a t- two weeks to save my mother or something you know what i mean so, that's something red dead did yeah. if you if you were out of camp for for too long they would Rock come star. and find you <laughs> yeah. so yeah, yeah. here's my thought process and i truly believe this i would love i would kill for an open world rpg to treat some quests like dead rising and so you had mm. to know what quick travel, what how much time quick travel took. And maybe you're like, yeah. oh, quick travel follows the road. 
but think about it this way. Quick travel follows the road, and that's the time. At 2.5 hours, it says estimated 2.5. But you know if you treat it like a game and you fucking jump that horse up the mountain yeah. and you come yeah, down, yeah. you got 30 minutes. You know and what so, did, though? Yeah. But hang on. I'm just saying imagine a game where some of it's open, but but the tracking and requirement to know how long things took is there, and those missions are like they're in there yeah. and they're a huge reward so it's like dude you got to here's a note you need to get it to this kingdom in this amount of time and if you don't accept that quest it's like maybe it says one and done like maybe the quest has a a, a, a star and it's like this is a one and done quest if you don't take it it's happening and the world's moving forward and this thing will happen or you take Didn't it stalker do something it. like that where it's like ai life and shit happens like progresses while you're not kind of participating uh, factions can... fight been for dragon's dogma the original one actually. no no not dragon's dogma sorry uh you said oh, yeah, stalker he said dogma. yeah you I said stalker yeah, 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 i, I yeah, don't yeah. know about stalker but yeah yeah but dragon's um, dogma kind of did because they had a similar thing to to dark souls um where or to the dark souls type games where npcs could die so you could there were some time quests where if you didn't complete them in time i think from what i remember the and a given npc might die but what i'm saying is i i know we've had games that sometimes do it i'm saying i would love to see a developer take this on as the new dark souls of time like this is the way we're gonna <laughs> our yeah. game kingdom come as abzi said with kingdom come that was there were parts of kingdom come that were like that yes i would love to see a dragon's dogma or a witcher you know that's a big deal they tell you they're like you need to know and maybe you sim out how much you feed the horse. And so therefore, now you got to make sure your horse is fed because it runs faster. And so now there's a reason to do those things mm -hmm. versus, oh, clean your gun because it does more damage if you clean it. But here it's like you feed your horse occasionally because you don't want your horse to starve. But in the game, there's a quest and you know you need to take this and deliver it in a certain amount of time. So it's like, make sure that horse has got the food, make sure you don't have inventory on the horse. So the horse is lighter. I think that would be fucking really fun. I think that would be a, a huge different yeah, take on the RPG. But yeah, that, that that's one of the things that makes a game like 80 days so much fun. Where 80, 80 days is all about like planning out how you get um, a fog to the around around the world in 80 days as as passport two and you have to allocate time properly to to getting from a to b and and planning that out yeah i think it'd be and awesome that's, that's johnny a really fun game um yeah. well the first thing i thought when that question popped up was persona 5 because even though yes it is limiting to have the day cycle mm -hmm. and at times it was like okay i want to do more uh it actually made you value what you chose to do in a certain way even though the deadlines were very, you know, uh, generous, right? It still felt like I want to make use of my day. You know, like I want to, I don't know, boost my stats or do something important. And I, I almost would like to see that experimented with in like an open world game where there is some type of tracking. Like, listen, you got 15 days to get to mm -hmm. whatever, or maybe there is something where you know, a day passes and if you don't do something productive, there is maybe a, uh, you know, a side effect. Maybe you get fat if you don't exercise. I don't know. You know, uh, there's all sorts of things people could build into that. But I like the structure it gives, the cadence of the days. Yeah, I think that it would be amazing to see an open world company sort of try to handle this. Um, I'm going to do some super chats. SBZ, $5 super chat. Capcom Super Elections is live now. You can vote which titles you want them to remake or continue. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay. Capcom Super Super Dino Capcom crisis. Capcom <laughs> Super go, go Elections. Code, Ver or Veronica, dude. Co code, code Veronica. Code Veronica. Code Veronica. Code <laughs> Veronica. Um, why why my why my gaming? I guess two dollars. I love you all and am proud of all, even takedown. <laughs> takedown Damn. hasn't been on in a while and he still gets shit thrown at him. Oh, uh, takedown. Yeah, I, I, dude, I'm telling you, this would be awesome for me. I just think it would be a great way to handle an RPG, and it would feel differently if they start if they made it a part that was so big that it was in their PR, it was in their, you know, like we're seeing with Dragon's Dogma and Black Desert. Like the where sales we're, pitch. The sales pitch is that, listen, we're making it so that something's not everything, because if somebody says, get me, you know, I, I'm going to cast a spell, I need 10 or that doesn't need to be mm -hmm. restricted. But the idea that some things would be and the attention to detail, because here's what I love. 
Fast travel is great, but I always joke about I don't like it because it removes me from the world. But I love the idea that a lot of quests could be done in that way. And then a lot of quests would be done in a different way. And I just think mm -hmm. that that would be very cool to do. It would be a phenomenal way to change things up. Yeah. Or it would suck. It could also suck completely. There's I something mean, compelling about the idea that you may not be able to do everything in a certain way. In, in a way, if you can do everything, it makes yeah. it all like less pressing. You know, I, I don't know. It's yeah. like when people say, you know, because uh, we're going to die someday, it makes like you know, life more meaningful. And if we weren't going to die, we just wouldn't do anything because we would have no impetus to to do anything. Yeah, there's a time. I mean, time matters in some games, and I get why they try to go away from it. But um, in Revenge of Shinobi, if you didn't kill the last boss in time, the girl dies and you get the bad ending. You just spoiled the 23-year-old <laughs> game. I'm just joking. Yeah. I, I mean, we've seen it. Like, like uh, all these guys have stated, there's been games that have done it, but no game that has treated it to matter. And I, that's what I... That I would love to see a, a company just do it. We've got games of all other types, right? I mean, it seems like yeah. right now games are flexible enough that we see people doing so many different things that I feel like this could, you know, could end up solving some of the issues I have with some RPGs. Not all of them, but some. Uh, let's see. Moving on to the next question. These are from Discord. If you get a chance to join Discord, it's an awesome place. We do games. We do streaming of stuff together. We have pretty awesome chats and very few fights, which is uh, pretty surprising when you think about it uh jesus crust oh you can become a youtube member and also get access jesus crust disney billion dollar investment into epic your thoughts on it and disney investing more into gaming in general so i don't know if you guys saw this abzi and i talked about this right before our podcast ended disney and epic and the investment there and what we were laughing about and then what i found out later when i looked at this they didn't mention metaverse but that's what they're doing it is a metaverse, but they're so afraid of the terms. And I think we've talked, and I brought it up in a recent video that a lot of different terms are going to start being dropped. Service games are being right. dropped. Suicide Squad was very tentative to call it. We know it's a service game, but they were tent they were trying to call it anything but that. Yeah, yeah. And metaverse is the same thing, but that's what they're doing. So Got epic rebranding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rebranding the terms. The term they're going to go away from. We'll know what they are, right? It's, we're yeah. not idiots. It's like we, we know what they are. But it's we know it's, it's like loot box, so you can call it a surprise, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. you could surprise a surprise <laughs> rectangle. Hey, buddy, surprise rectangle. You're like totally different thing. Totally. Yeah. It'll take a little while, but we'll pick it up. Um, I don't think any of you guys are Fortnite fans, right? And none of you guys are Disney fans. So oh as no. what I mean is huge. Like none of us track this too closely, right? Disney or right. Epic or yeah. Fortnite's had so many interactivities and all these things. They've got like Abzi's talked about, they had like I don't know, Drake or somebody was in there doing, you know, doing concerts and shit. I, I am Maybe a have Snoopy. Disney, what you could call a Disney skeptic, I guess, in terms of their, I guess, continued quest to sort of consolidate all of media. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> um, in that sense, like uh, owning, like buying Fox, buying Lucasfilm, buying pretty much every, nearly every yeah. studio under the sun, it feels like, <laughs> and incorporating like nearly every aspect of media under their umbrella. Um, that's not something I'm a huge fan of. Um, <laughs> so I'm not a huge fan of the deal in, the, in those terms. Uh, Gathry asks, what are Microsoft's plans for the future? I personally think they could care less about console wars and are looking at uh, companies like NetEase and Tencent as future competitors. I also think that puts them in a possible position to rival Steam's storefront thoughts. Well, we discussed all that. I don't think they are in any place to rival Steam storefront. Uh, their storefront is absolutely chaos and terrifyingly bad. I don't see anything about Microsoft being able to compete with Steam storefront. I don't even think Microsoft. Oh, Johnny had to go for a second. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Steam and Microsoft are even competitors on the storefront. I don't think Microsoft's a competitor no. with anybody on a storefront. I could make a storefront on a $5 Squarespace page better than Microsoft Store. Okay, maybe <laughs> not, but you know. Um, right. Yeah, I don't see any overlap there. I don't know if you guys do, but it seems to me that they're, they're, that's one of the big like, weaknesses they have. I don't think Microsoft really has an, a vested interest in competing directly against Valve in that. No. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. I mean, they want... It, it, and if they do, it'll be something bigger, grander. Like, they want... You know, right. like buying lawn chairs from them or something. I don't know. But yeah, their store is absolute trash. It's really, really terrible, no matter what. Um, what are the games for this year now? 
let's not talk about the Dragon's Dogma or the big ones. What's a small game you guys are interested in? Is there a small title it's big or drive? What'd you say? Pacific Drive. Oh yeah, Pacific Drive. Yeah, gotcha. That's the first yeah. thing I thought of. That's the yeah. next thing I'm interested in. Demo? Did you do the demo? Or are you nope. just saying fuck it? Yeah, I'm buying gotcha. it. Yeah. yeah, I'm getting it, dude. Pacific Drive looks to be a little bit of a cult, like hit already. Like the number it of has people, everything that tickles my fancy. You know, yeah, you know me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's got the inventory management you love so much yeah, that I, I hate love. you for as a person. I yeah. hate you deep down inside Ooh. as a human because you like it so much. Dude, I love that shit. You're, <laughs> well, you're going to like it then because there's a lot. But I mean, it, it is funny because it's yeah, just yeah. like the moment I look at something, I'm like, no, you're like, yes, this is exactly. Yeah, We'd never yeah, have to worry yeah. about dating the same girl as long as that girl was an in inventory. But True. yeah, man, it's, uh, it, it's cool that you say that because that game, I think a lot of people didn't do the demo and were already looking at pacific drive like a lot of people i talked to said they watched a preview and were just like yeah this is already yeah. it's for me it's like it hits it hits what i want for that game that's a good Same that's a good the, choice uh, the uh immersive sim community is really hyped about it too oh like are they i, I haven't checked stuff, are yeah. they in, uh, yeah i would not doubt yeah. it because dude it's got it's got everything and I if it had been a horse or whatever, it would have had a different the idea that it's a car a interaction. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. And the ability, like I said, that first time I noticed, Abzi, when you look through the window and you can see what you need to upgrade on the car, what's damaged without getting in the car. I was like, yeah. oh, it's so smart to have all the readouts, you know, so in this curve just enough it's like that my you favorite can like part of uh, days gone in a game. Basically, it's like, the, you know, taking care of the bike was like my favorite part of it. Oh, but yeah. This one is like way more in depth in that sense with the car. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. What about you, Silver? Any uh, smaller titles that you're interested uh, in? There's a point-and-click adventure game, old-school adventure game, kind of in the style of, like, Full Throttle and stuff, as an Agatha Christie mystery crime uh, called Locomotive, coming out at the end of this month. Um, or slated to come out at the end of this month. That's looking interesting. <laughs> and it's called Locomotive? Yeah, like two words, Locomotive. Oh, I see it. I see it, yeah. Yeah. Also, the two other ones I'm like super hyped for, but I don't know if they're coming out this year. Is um is the um no time no king no uh, the the Ori devs new new game the that one and uh, Pony Island two are, are are two that I'm really really excited for, but I don't think they're I don't think they're coming out this year. The the first one got no time delayed. For the wicked. No time the, for the wicked. First time yeah. got delayed yesterday by a small amount oh, of time. No, yeah, small amount wicked, of time. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you're probably in good shape. Just a small amount of time. Um, nice. What about you, Johnny? I don't know if you heard the question, but it was like, is there an indie or small game you're interested in? So no Dragon's Dogmas, nothing big like that. Any any small mm. ones? Uh, well, it's not indie, but that Stellar Blade game looked interesting. At least, you know, something I want to check out, know more about. Yeah, that's pretty big still, though, isn't it? Do you just not check out the smaller ones until they pop up? Do you do a lot of Steam, I... smaller games, Steam indie games? Do you? I do, but uh, to be honest with you, I haven't checked the release schedule for this year that carefully mm. to kind of yeah. check into the some of the smaller ones that are coming out. Oh, man. What's up, Manor Lusitan? Lords. Emberville, you mentioned up Manor Lords. There is yeah. one, Manor actually. Manor Lords, um, yeah. Do you guys remember the one called Ultros? Oh, dude, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that Space, was Space Womb, the 2D fighter. Or the, yeah. Very interesting to Metroid me, Bania. and that's coming out in February. So. And they have a demo out I, for it, too. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Dylan says he he got, uh, or he's almost finished up in Yakuza. I think everybody likes Yakuza this time. Dev Guy says Lightyear Frontier as well. Yeah, that one's the plant. Oh. I was joking about it a couple a couple podcasts ago. It's mechs with gardens. Like your <laughs> your raises and garden in a mech or whatever the demo's oh. out. I did survive the fall as a demo that uh, or a preview for their demo in that game. Um, aside from looking a little rough, is really 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 enjoyable. A ton of improvements to that kind of game. Very much state of decay in an isometric style game. Turned out really well. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot coming this year that we're probably. You know, like that'll end up being super popular. That are just smaller games that just aren't. We're not going to hear about until like a month prior. I mean, the Steam Fest was crazy. Mm. The Steam Fest had so many games. I think I've downloaded like 35 demos and I've done four. There's just a lot of titles available right now. Just a shit ton. What else do we got? We've covered most of it. Um, there. Uh, what the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, I had one. 
Sorry, I, I'll, I'll I'll think about it while you guys talk about something. Shit, I had something. God we can do thirty minutes of uncomfortable silence. Well, uh, th there was something that popped up on my side. You guys know I like Subnautica a lot. Oh, and, yeah, I saw uh, this. Yeah, they <laughs> talked about Subnautica two, right? So yeah. they're working on on this game, and what they said kind of had a bit of a controversy because they mentioned the word lives, uh, you know, uh, I think live service or mm -hmm. something, uh, which they then explained all they mean by that is they will release subsequent updates on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Th that's kind of a side point I wanted to discuss with you guys. Is that, are we there now where like live service has lost all meaning because every, yes. most games have yeah. continuous updates that, and you know stuff coming out content yeah. yes they yeah. stretch that fucking job thing yeah. so much man yeah yeah even they're on the uh, report <laughs> yeah. yeah even on the report i think yeah it's absolutely like live service and they're one of the few that aren't charging for it they're very few most are charging for it and the idea that they felt they had to use that or thought it, it, it shows that it's just a bad term to use unless yeah, you really it's, mean it's a bad live term because yeah. they went on to explain that it's it's basically a single player game that well, people want you can co -op. play well hold, hold on that you can play offline and there are no battle passes or like you know season pass or anything uh, but there will be a co-op mode if you want to play it like that as well which is like you say but something people have wanted yeah I yeah, mean, couldn't like, they have just... It's weird. People were like, oh, it's multiplayer now. But before people were like, oh, but I guess people want co-op modes and not like full on multiplayer. Right. Nobody that, wants 32 people in that game. Right. Yeah. 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 Can you imagine that? Yeah, I, I think they could have. I think if I was them, I would have said something like a continually evolving world with no microtransactions and just been done. Just said it like that. Yeah. Like, it seems to me that you could have easily just said it like that and, uh, you know, completely gone away because um, live service, I mean, people who are doing live service games are saying it. And the people who aren't doing it usually are using different terms. I think live service now has that heady term of, you know, scooter. Yeah. And um, that's what I was even yep. saying in the survey is um, they, they said 95 percent. There's an asterisk and says anybody who's updating games, but then later stated 65 percent are switching to. A live service game with cost so you're still getting a massive amount of the industry using live service so if you want to differentiate yourself like subnautica 2 they should have used the proper or you yeah, should have made their own term yeah. whatever they want to make and that's what one of the things is those terms are changing we saw it metaverse was not mentioned in the disney epic thing because they did not want to they don't want that term anymore you know they don't want to use it they want to change it to something else Continually, I, I put a bunch in the review or in the pre or in the uh, video about this. I, like I came up with a bunch of terms that I think we'll see, you know, which is like evolving world, you know, stuff that they because they can get out of, you know, remember when it used to, by the way, guys, do you guys remember this term always connected? You guys remember yeah. that? Yeah. That was pre live oh service. Goodness. Remember oh, that? And the, exactly. Dude, isn't it weird how that Internet term has pretty much gone away? Internet of things always yeah. connected. Yeah. yeah. Um, that is so crazy. I remember the, the other thing, the topic. Yeah, I go for it. The topic. So uh, the From Software, From Software, so the From Software owner, his name is Kadokawa. He bought the Octopath Traveler Studio. Oh my player. God. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. To, to strengthen the ability to create IP in games. So Oh baby. Maybe let's maybe they'll have Elden cause, Ring cause, Octopath Traveler. Dude, what I'm thinking is they'll have better or more um character driven stuff. Because Octopath Traveler is just like a character That's all it like is. character stories. Yeah. Yeah. So I think maybe they'll they'll have more Ooh. of a story that people want rather than just lore. Right. So yeah. You know oh. what what they're cooking. But they seem to be cooking. So here's what's even funnier, dude. If you got, if we all sat in a room like monkeys and we typed away a thousand years on typewriters, would we have ever come up <laughs> with from never. software buying the Aqua? <laughs> like, right? Yeah. Octop it's such well, first of all, some from software crossing. buying anybody, right? I don't think they've ever bought anybody in their life. Yeah, I, I, I could be wrong. I yeah, I think they're just big enough now, especially after Elder Ring. Well, yeah, not only this, Abzi, always... let me, I just real quick, Johnny, I just want to point this out. Uh, them buying somebody also shows continually that they're independent of Sony, which still people think. And so it's the idea of them buying somebody else makes you go, oh, wait, what? 
Oh yeah, they're not. Entity. They're their yeah. own entity. They're yeah, entity. You yeah, forget. Yeah. I wonder even, if even with it coming on all systems, their own games, or if they're still gonna do Bandai Namco Ooh. or Activision. I would assume they are not, or they will start to in some way. It just yeah. seems to me like that that they're big enough now, and I'm sure they're getting money that it makes sense to do that. Sorry, Johnny, I interrupted you to point no, that out. No, not uh, not at all. I, I was gonna say it is interesting because they've always been so not closed, but it's like they have their way yeah. of making games. Yeah. That's how they want to make games. Yeah, like always, a rock star or something, right? It, like, it, just, yeah, you could go back to Demon thing. Souls, and you know, the, it's recognizable. It's, it's recognizable. Ten true, yeah. ten true. Yeah, yeah. yeah dude, yeah. guys, yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, if you said Octopath Traveler three, it, it'll call it itself. But if you said Elden Ring Traveler, and it was a dude. Octopath Traveler style game that was Elden Ring lore and stuff, and c talking, because that's one of the things I miss in the Elden Ring from games is the lack of narrative, the lack of spoken and. And like worlds alive, it would be fucking. It would be awesome, even if it was it's, just a couple. Uh, it's characters. a lot of it, like hearsay. Like you, you don't like the conversation doesn't take place directly. You're hearing, yeah, right, right. The you know someone recounting something. Yeah, in a way, dude. I, I, it's just a crazy idea, man. I never, that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up because it was, that's a purchase out of the blue, like out yeah. of the blue. No one would have been like, oh, this makes total sense. I do want to point out some rumors came out from Midori on Twitter, a person who was uh, leaked a bunch of stuff. All I, as far as I know, all accurate, especially about Sega. Um, Golden Axe was delayed and then they deleted that tweet but it, it, Golden Axe, if you guys remember, was one of the mini games they showed yeah. in that package of games, and it was by far the roughest. And there was a, they made a tweet, but they also made a tweet that Virtual Fighter Three is now in development, which is also what I had heard. But I had heard that it was in pre, like they've now chosen right. to move forward. So their their tweet backs the same thing up, which they're is that virtual. There, yeah, there's they because Sega had said we don't know how to modernize it, and th that seems like a freeze. We do not know, and now. The rumors that had been popping up and now tweeted uh, yesterday or the day before was that Virtual Fighter 3 is in production, which is awesome to me because uh, maybe they saw Tekken, guys. Maybe they saw Tekken's success and they thought to themselves, okay, we can, you know, we want a piece of that, number one. They've always been competitors. But number two, they're just like, we think we know how to modernize Wait. it. I don't know if they need to modernize it too much. Kudukawa uh, is, that's is, kind of what I was about is to a say. a company. Great. Who, who what? Wait. Kudukawa is a company that owns what the fuck? Kudukawa is a company that owns From Software, not the head of From Software. Oh, okay. I've never heard of this. It's like, but I think From Software is is their own is their only game because they own a lot of different shit like comics and like. Wait, what is Kudukawa? I'm gonna research this a bit more. While you research Kudukawa, that, uh, go yeah. go go for it, Silver. We were talking about modernization of Virtual Fighter Three. Yeah, I think maybe they've also just seen like the huge sort of aspect of nostalgia that runs through like a lot of the indie game scene where yeah. they don't really touch up all that much on those old systems and mechanics and think and especially like we've seen very old school uh fighting games become quite popular on on like Steam and stuff. And maybe maybe they've seen maybe we don't necessarily have to top touch up all that much about old Virtual Fighter or Virtual Fighter Two. Um, yeah, maybe we just need to do it like a slight upgrade on that or or whatever, and and that'll take off. Um, I think uh, also I don't know about you, Silver, but I personally believe that the idea of modernization of stuff doesn't make sense for all games. I mean, Virtual Fighter is its no, own I thing. Agree. And it works yes. fine, and it's completely different than what we are seeing. So the idea of them just basically saying, okay, we're just doing Virtual Fighter 3 makes sense as well, and I hope that's what's happening. I hope they just decided like, that let's like, just do it. Like when um, uh, Ron Gilbert and uh, uh, Dave Grossman, right, um, remade Monkey Island. Remade or, Monkey Island. Like, yeah. made, or not remade it, but made the, made the Monkey Island sequel, Return to Monkey Island, right? Um that wasn't so much a modernization as like a refinement of, of yeah. old school Monkey Island. Um, yeah, I'm excited for it, man. I think like that kind of purchase, also the Dark Souls one, and that those kind of things excite me because they're not the expected players. I mean, that's yeah. not a like, like I just it never in a million years would I've ever thought about that. It just would have complete like just would not be something I expected.
I think we are seeing, though, some of these companies looking at the roadmap and maybe the issues with finances, and we see the epic Fortnite joining up. And Johnny was saying earlier it'd be awesome if uh, he had said it'd be awesome if uh, if Nintendo and Microsoft joined up in something. I, I think after playing Ra- Rabbids versus Mario, I would like to see more of that as well. I do like yeah. the idea of these companies saying, you know what, man? It's like, it's okay. You know, it's, you know, we're going to do what we're going to do and occasionally, you know, the streams can mix and it'll be okay. It won't like destroy everything, but we'll have to see how all this is going to turn out. According to developers, listen to this, Vanishers, Ghost of New Eden has five distinct endings. I can, I can confirm that it's got more than one. I'll say that. It's awesome. It's awesome. <clears throat> Um, oh man, I, when, when am I gonna fit it though? Like, when, when am I gonna play it? That's that's a real question. I'm still on Yakuza, and then there's the, the, the Pacific Drive, and then there's Final Fantasy, and then there's Dragon's Dogma, and then there's Stalker, and then. Oh yeah, I also remembered. Um, there's also a sequel coming this year to um, Genesis Noir, uh, a game I'm very fond of, um, which was kind mm. of a, a Fantasia. Why do I know for, that? For it's video the, games on with Game Pass, with jazz music. Um, Right. Um, and it's, um, yeah, okay. There's I know a sequel it. coming for it called, um, Nirvana Noir, uh, slated for this year. No nice. shit. I, I, I played it yeah. a little bit and I got anxiety. <laughs> Why? From Genesis <laughs> it's, Noir? It's very, uh, it's very existential. Oh, very, it is very, very existential. existential. Yeah. 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 yeah I yeah, forgot yeah. that one is. Yeah. That one is. Yeah. That one sort of got the old, uh, it, 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 like when you look up at the stars and you're like, man, I'm small. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. you're like, I don't know if I want to feel this way. That's the thing <laughs> yeah. about some feelings. You only want them at certain times, it's, it's right? It's great. It's, it's great. Not, it, it's, not a lot of games, you know. No, not a lot of games do that. Not a lot of games make feeling. you feel like you're looking into the gulf of nothingness like that game. Uh, leave it to Silver to remind us of that one. Um, can, are we going to do, uh, I guess we will get a Banishers review. Yeah, you will. Ban- that one's already done, finished up. Nice. Um, Ooh, I'm excited. Yeah, there's, uh, by the way, yeah, people ask all the time, am I still doing reviews? Hell yeah, but. COVID and everything else just made it really difficult. Um, but yeah, yeah, you'll see reviews. You need to watch them, though, just to continue to get them. Because, man, I've done some videos. And I've, been, I've had people be like, dude, I didn't even know you still existed, man. You just did a review. I haven't got like something for three years from you. I'm like, yeah, YouTube, thank you. Right. It's just the way it is, man. It's the way it is. You got to just roll with them punches. Um, I also want to sh- always get them. Yeah, it, it's funny. I think... I think it's also just because, you know, some people weren't interested in what I was doing or the games I was reviewing. They don't watch a couple times and YouTube is like, right. no worries. Then it, then it throws them out. Yeah. Yeah. Of because the rotation or whatever. Yeah. You know how I know, Silver? I looked up on accident, misspelled something in YouTube, hit enter. And the moment I got that, the new search, that showed up in my shorts. Like instantly. They wasted no time. One missed, one mistyped right. entry into YouTube resulted in that filling. Um, what I wanted to point out something. So Sega had reported gaming profits dropped sharply due to weak sales of some games. This was done uh, on Tech Raptor, and they were talking about a drop, and they're doing yen, uh, four hundred and sixty-three million down from four hundred and seventy-four. They and this is is sort of weird to me because that doesn't seem like a huge drop. But I don't do no, English yeah. conversions well. But that still doesn't seem like a huge drop. But it was that reported that certainly isn't huge. Right, and it said sales of new games were 5.27 million compared to 6.9. So that's, you know, that's about a million in the same period in the same fiscal year for Sega. I don't think people need to worry about Sega, I guess is what I'm saying. Sega seems to have their plans in place, and the rumors I'm hearing about Sega, because there's a big Sega fan, people know, so sometimes somebody will contact me on those. Virtual Fighter, the stuff that they're doing, uh, their super game stuff, the stuff that they're doing with the other titles. Um, I think Sega's, you know, Every company will have a down year, except for Microsoft. I don't know. Microsoft, it seems. <laughs> and Microsoft. I mean, they did They did have a rough patch towards the end with uh, canceling hyenas and... Um, yes. And, yeah. the, and the layoffs and whatnot, but yeah. You know who also did? Ubisoft, when they canceled that one of yeah. theirs, the shooter or two of theirs. Um, also with Ubisoft, you were joking <clears throat> prior to the podcast, uh, Guillaume or Guillaume or Goume or whatever his name is. What did Guillaume, he say? Yeah. He said... Uh, what, uh, that Skull and Bones was going to be a quadruple A game. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We've all had the friend who so says something too, wrong from, in front of others and will from, not from back down. What I read, it was an investor call where one of the investors actually asked, um, 
why are we pricing it at a full at a full right. price when we're like monetizing it into a live service doesn't make more sense to like make it a free to play system or model or or whatever and Gimo said no it's it's a triple a and then he sort of corrected himself and said quadruple a game it's a full <laughs> play game yeah i have been the person i know the feeling and I've seen my friends do it, where you say something wrong, you double down on it, you triple down, and it, and you, you get yeah. the people in the room going. But I wonder if internally when he was saying that, people just looked at him and were like, dude, fucking 4A, what are you talking about? We've already we've been through this, Ubisoft. They've done it, Microsoft have done it. They both dropped the quadruple A. It's not going to happen. It will never happen. Quadruple A is a term from anybody other than three or four kings on a hill who look down at us as places yeah. for them to step is never going to end up being integrated into our conversation unless we're saying you're dumb for call, calling it a quadruple a game there's no such thing it's not a quadruple a game it's a more expensive game that's it it's more expensive because i'm going to tell you guys do you guys think red dead 2 or gta do you think gta 6 is a quadruple a game no it's a triple a game that is phenomenal and costs them a bunch of money it's not a quadruple yeah, it's a going game. to be perfect though well they want, yeah, them wanting it to be perfect is different, right? But I, I just, dude, I wish they would shut up. I mean, I, the Ubisoft calls are always highly interesting because they're very informative. Very, they're very open about stuff. They, right. I don't know if you guys saw, but they're like, okay, so Star Wars is coming here. Then we're looking at, uh, um, what's the next one? Star Wars and, oh shit, there's another one. But anyway, they said Star Wars was coming here, our, our next big one. They're very informative of what they want to do, where they want to plan things. And if they change things, they change them. But they also love their NFTs and they love their other stuff. And they, they're they <laughs> yeah, just one yeah, of those baby, companies. NFTs. NFTs, man. And you're just like, yeah. dude, I fucking hate. I, I hate that they can't. It would be Better so. Yeah. Right. It would behoove. Guys, yeah. imagine how much easier it would be for them as a company to remove just two or three of the dumb shit that they say. And that they yeah. they just try to push, and instead, just two or three, just two or three. No, well, okay, so quadruple A is one. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Live service, live service would be, even though their live services are pretty good. You know, they do have the divisions and stuff. But True. I think the other thing that they have a tendency to do is, they they stymie us when they say a game is being developed and you don't hear much about it, like Beyond Good and Evil, which is what I heard, saw Abzi right. and and somebody talking about yesterday. Which is the back and forth of that game? They they they're not transparent enough. And then NFTs drop the NFT talk. We're done. NFTs are done. NFTs <laughs> are as over as anything has ever yeah, been. Yeah, they're they're done. Yeah, they're done. They're done and dead and buried. Other than and, Twitter bots. Yeah, they're with Jimmy Hoffa under like the fifty you know fifty <laughs> yard line somewhere. They're 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 done. It's over. It's over. Yeah. Move on from NFTs. Lawman five dollar super chat. Thanks to the great podcast. I got to take a break from infinite wealth. <clears throat> um, MPPD says, I'm not going to lie. I was waiting and hoping for a Skull and Bones beta review and Helldivers 2 ACG is my most trusted source. Well, first, thanks very much for that. Number two, I would love to review all these, but I really have been absolutely stymied trying to get the channel up. Spotify took us down twice for technical reasons. Got it back up as of... Sorry, I'm going to check. I'm going to verify we're still back the up. the day before yesterday? Day before yesterday, and then they turned they turned us off and then said, okay, you're good to go. We fully apologize. And then immediately at the exact same time the next day turned us off. Okay, it looks like it's up right now. Um, we'll test because I'll upload this podcast and we'll have to see. But I am working hard on that. Aplish says, why not be the studio that releases games that are always A plus one? A plus or one. S plus, I mean, like, if we're going with Japanese. Yeah, we should do S. <laughs> S tier. Yeah. S tier games. <laughs> oh my God. Could it, okay, I have a question for you guys. If Sony, Nintendo, or Microsoft stated our Zelda, Horizon Zero Dawn, or uh, Gears is an S game, how would you react as a consumer? Would you be like, listen, you 50 year old jackasses, quit trying to, you know, integrate yourselves into our slang? Or would you would S be better than quadruple A? Or do we need it? How would you react if you heard that an S tier game was coming? That's such a Japanese thing, I feel like. It is. S, <laughs> S plus. And it's such a young, it's Triple almost like they S said, game. what if they said, here's, a, we got a red pill game coming. You'd be like, dude, even red we don't, <laughs> even we don't want to hear people say that, let alone you. I was teasing you because I hate the word Soey. We've got an anti-Soey game. Gears is an anti-Soey <laughs> game. You'd be like, what? 
dude, what hell are you guys yeah, doing? Baby. Give me all hell, the testosterone. Yeah. It's rad. It's hell yeah. It's like, come on, guys, move on, man. You know, don't don't do that to us. I I I think I personally think them calling it that is weird too. Because a lot of B tier games will never call themselves a B. And most developers I know who work on the double A space don't call themselves double A. Mm -hmm. Ever. I don't think I've ever, I could be wrong, but I don't think I've ever seen Focus consider themselves openly on like a discussion and they randomly talk in a financial meeting and go, well, as the leading double A game producer, you'd be like, because mm. it's, it's lodging you, right? Let us, not let us, but your price and everything picks the genre and, and let that flesh out on its own. Don't call it, you know, you call it that yourself. It sounds so weird. It would be okay. like describing yourself as a small streamer. Let's say if you are someone who's, instead of saying like a growing streamer, you're calling yourself a small streamer. Yeah. Oh, oh you mean it caps you almost. It almost it caps, caps you. you. Yeah, true. Bit. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it Silver wasn't was already claimed by a different industry. I could easily see like triple X rating getting used because it's triple <laughs> stream. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Extreme. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the most extreme game ever. Yeah. Triple X has a different connotation now. But, Would the uh, price you know. <laughs> go up if you say, look, it's an S to your game? Are we well, talking like $100? Well, is that not what just happened with Skull and Bones? He stated, he asked, why do we not do it at a cheaper price? And he said, because this is a triple A, oh, I mean quadruple A game. Quadruple. Did that not just happen with that game? It's just that it didn't go above the current pricing. Ooh. So if that's the language they're using, I do not I would not be surprised if somebody said it's a quadruple A game, so it's 80, or it's an S tier game, so it's 90. And Abzi and I have always joked about we want a one hundred dollar game. I would love to see it as a thought process, but I don't want to see it from Ubisoft. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. If, yeah. if 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 uh, Rockstar said we're making a one hundred dollar game, I'd be like, as a thought process, let's see what you deliver. But if, right. if Ubisoft said we're doing a $100 game, I would be like, guys, you need to make sure your $60 games are where they're supposed to be. Yeah. Your Skull yeah, and Bones are where they're supposed to be, right? Like, yeah, because it's another level of commitment, right? It, it, it's, it's something because it a $100 game is a, yeah. that's a, we've talked about this. It would be actually this. interesting for you to review it because... It's almost like a, a new parameter for you to think about, like a hundred dollar, yeah, game. Yeah, oh, I'd be looking for it to literally be better in almost every way, or be offering some service, not service, but something within it that was so beyond anything else. That like an order of magnitude. Yeah, and when we have games above. like Witcher Three for sixty, and they're as big as they are, then you have to really go and. Yeah. And I think you guys were telling me the DLC for Witcher Three is ridiculous. Isn't the DLC for Witcher Three like Heart and Stone yeah, or all those huge best. games? Yeah. yeah. So and were they were sixty? Were the DLC for Witcher Three were those no. full price games? No. 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 Well, no, like they were like bucks. twenty for I think thirty or so. Thirty. Um, yeah, like twenty five, thirty. I think. Shut up, Aaron. Mm. I think the first one was cheaper. The second one was uh, was the more expensive. Blood and wine. Yeah. 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 So so and you guys feel that those were easily the size of many AAA games at sixty, correct? Oh, for sure. Uh, Blood and yeah. I mean, uh, Hearts of Stone. I yeah. I mean, even I'm... like Hearts of Stone was shorter. It was like ten, twelve hours, but uh, yeah. like it was a very focused story. It's you know my favorite story in Witcher so that could have been you know a 12 hour triple a game or whatever and yeah. the other one is like a big 30 hour game 20 30 hour game which used to be the norm for RPGs yeah there you go there you go yeah somebody was also asking me I got a DM from Sony in patron um anything to share on fable going multi-platform so I, I I've talked about this I think the multi-platform discussion is sort of um it basically going to turn out to be uh, they choose what goes multi-platform so no i don't have any i don't have any word on on that i just uh i think now people are just throwing game names out like like sauce it just, it just doesn't matter anymore back to this discussion yeah. um yeah dudes i i don't know witcher 3 i think because they had such a good platform for building dlc it's a little like phantom liberty where they had already a good plat i mean it right. questions with cyberpunk aside 
they already had the engine and everything is what I mean. And so they're able to deliver into that and build on it and flesh it out and say it's part of the same world. And it feels like it's worth more, even though it's not. Or it feels like you're getting more, even though a lot of it was in the original world. Because in the, both of those DLCs, you could still explore all of Witcher 3, right? It just added in to Witcher 3. Yeah. 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 Layered on yeah. the game. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what you, new uh, mechanics and stuff. Are you guys excited for them going to switch into Unreal? Like, it's going to be pretty cool to see them going away from that engine, man. Dude, uh, have you seen in the report the percentage of games using Unreal and Unity over it's all nuts. Other, yep. It's nuts. Even nuts. Propri proprietary Even engines, proprietary, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. That, in that survey, they were also talking about, like, all of the developers looking at the proprietary, which is why Avatar switched um, to their engine, and they dropped Far Cry's engine for the next Far Cry, and it'll be the Division Avatar engine, because all Snowdrop those... Snowdrop engine's awesome. Snowdrop engine's awesome, and it allows for them to communicate Amazing. at much higher speed. Yeah. They were saying iterations yeah. of, like, 45 minutes versus overnight, yeah. you know? That kind of stuff, so you can just drop Crazy. into your multiplayer game. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. It probably also connects in some way to Ubisoft's old stuff that they announced a couple years ago, which was an overarching system for tracking all their game engines and iteration for remote developers as well as in-house called... Damn, I knew I was going to forget. I was giving, I was spreading that out, trying to give myself a moment to remember what that was called. <laughs> But they have a system of that where it's it's easier to jump in and iterate without breaking everybody else's version I of the game. I see what you mean. And is that engine uh, proprietary from Ubisoft? Like For Snowdrop? Them, is yeah. yeah, and then they do their own group. So every group, including Beyond Good and Evil, has their own engines. And what's happened is, for the first time really ever, Far Cry went away from the deny engine. They looked at it and they were like, it just can't make what we need to make in the new games. And so they, for the first time that I know of, at least the choice was to have the, uh, to give it to the other team and say, okay, Far Cry is now using this engine and we're no That's longer cool. the deny engine from what I understand is done. And everybody in chat and including myself and Abzi just said it, Snowdrop engine, if it wasn't proprietary, would probably have a lot of percentage points being used right now. I think a lot of developers mm -hmm. would probably use it That's because everything what you I hear. I was thinking, yeah, like, yeah. you know, why aren't a ton of other people using that? Because it looks no, incredible. It's performance is talking to John yeah. when Abzi and I did the Digital yeah. Foundry thing with John talking about Avatar and stuff just because I had DM'd him and he wasn't covering it and I didn't know and I'm like, you know, re reviews out. Have you checked? The, like, this game is just phenomenal. Like, the mm -hmm. the stuff that's going on in this is, like, mind-blowing compared to what we've seen from them. And just discussing with him and with others about the future of Far Cry and what they might, what a world might look like. Because I love 5, and I've been enjoying 6 with all these patches, but you look at it, and it's Far Cry. It's one, they look, like, I think Abzi and I said 3 and 4. I will I could play 1 and go, this is 3, and somebody would be like, no, Carrick, that's actually 4. You know, three and four looked a lot alike. Five looked alike. Six tried to go Cuba and looked a little, little different. So, are they even there licensing primal, it? No, they're primal not. in between. There's primal, yeah. And there's a cyberpunk one that's coming someday. I'm just gonna cross my fingers, man. I'm just gonna cross my fingers. <laughs> I mean, that that, that that was kind of um, blood dragon, blood dragon, a baby. Bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, blood dragons like Bloodborne, a remake everybody wants. That's just <laughs> right. It's just, I mean. <laughs> It, it would be amazing. Uh, Colin says Snowdrop is awful to develop in, uh, makes pretty games, but is horrendous, especially in the back end. That's so weird because six developers, including one ex Ubisoft developer, liked it. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say about that. Yeah, it could also be like what they're used to in a way. Like if you learn could be. to, or it could be know. one particular group and it doesn't like it for one thing, and one group likes yeah. it. It can always just be preference, of course, but yeah. you you do find sometimes in. Um, in developing that like what you learned first becomes your comfort zone like i started with c plus plus and i think that's great but a lot of people who started with java and then learned c plus plus they hate it you know what i mean yeah yeah um somebody was saying uh, the decima engine and uh death stranding 2 looked crazy yeah decima is also the same one isn't that the same one horizon zero dawn's oh, using uh that's a uh, death stranding that's death stranding 2 yeah yeah, stranded two. Uh, next Witcher is no longer on Red Engine. Exactly, they're going Unreal Engine. It's going to be pretty cool to see what they can do with that. I think Unreal Engine has a lot of stuff for narrative that probably wasn't built in, and mm. which might have been what we saw with Cyberpunk. 
might have been what, what we saw. Somebody was saying that uh, Resident Evil 5 remake is coming or something. Did you guys see that? Something yeah, about they did ask what we yeah, about, yeah. About but it did it get announced or is that an old no. bit of news that I forgot? It's just I think rumors or or leaks or something. I don't think it got announced. Uh, so another person just announced something for Xbox. Tom Henderson says nothing set in stone for Xbox ports apart from Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves, according to internal Xbox people. This is exactly what I've heard. So I'll just read this because this matches what I've said on Wednesday. But basically, he's talked to internal people, and that's the same exact sort of thing that I've heard, which is... Um, make of this what you will, but speaking with a few folks over there... They, Xbox, was very surprised to the extent of the rumors because nothing has been set in stone apart from Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves from what I've gathered from those sources, he says. Honestly, it sounds more like it's a prime example of whispering to people, just making shit up to capitalize off hysteria. Be interesting to see what they said because the rumors seem to be fueling decisions that might need more time in the oven, so to speak, which is also, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So that is quite literally what I think we said on Wednesday and what we even said, what I even said on Twitter is that's that's pretty much what I've heard was that it is literally just a decision by decision kind of thing. I think that sort of happens, right? You hear something, yeah, so you decide yeah. to pop off on it. So, um, and I think they also showed an unfortunate part of fandom, you know, with people losing their minds on Twitter, being like, I'm burning my Xbox, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, uh, I remember somebody saying they just need to come out and say something. I'm like, about a rumor? Like, do you, are they just going to respond to every single, like, it, and if yes. it's not true, are they going to respond quickly? Probably not. Cause they're like, what, like, where are we going with this? So we'll just have to see how it pans out. But that is, that is exactly it. So I don't know. Um, Colin says main devs do, but the sports staff have problems. That's why division two updates were always broken weapon skills. That's so interesting. Cause that's exactly, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, I can only say you sound like, you know, that, uh, the people you're talking to believe that. And people I'm talking to sort of seem to believe exactly the opposite, but I think most likely different levels of people. Um, but Clo Clo Brill retired from Xbox over this. Yeah, who cares who retires from Xbox? My God, I don't know if you guys have seen that, but people on Twitter who like our Xbox fans are like, "I'm retiring from Xbox. I'm done." I'm like, man, you are done. Oh, oh you are like done. a big, yeah. dramatic move. Yeah. Big hubaloo. Yeah. You know what, though? I've Don't seen so many consoles come and go. Yeah, that'll teach him a lesson. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Bob. Know. Yeah. Like, Joe Bob, yeah. Xbox Gamer, number underscore 799. You know, yeah. grab her by the number 69 yeah, is leaving. Chipotle, yeah, mo 69. moist Chipotle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Underwear Garment 64, who has a gamer score of <laughs> this, says he's leaving. It's like, okay, guys, whatever. Speaking yeah. of that, speaking of people leaving, in the industry, with people leaving and stuff like that, um, have you guys ever, have you guys ever seen somebody leave an industry and never come back and just sort of disappear like the doctors did? Because I was talking to somebody about the doctors for Bioware; those guys just evaporated. They're like, boom, we're gone. Is there any yeah. cool stories from sports or whatever where you find out that some sports legend left in the premiere of his life and now he's like a gardener somewhere? And now or he's some a cool baseball player? Yeah, or now, <laughs> now, now no, I'm not a baseball player. But I always love to hear those cool stories. Michael Jordan. Well, Michael yeah. Jordan, but dude, I was looking at actors a couple weeks ago with the guys in the yeah. chat and we were talking about an actor. I was like, oh, I haven't seen them. And I look it up and this person yeah. just in the middle of the height, the height of their, of their popularity, Walked away to like, no light, you know, whether it be retail store, or whatever. He opened a yogurt store. Just opened a yogurt store. <laughs> yeah, he I mean, left he all acting. Rick, Rick, Rick Moranis famously Rick did. Moranis. Yeah. Unfortunately, some of that was connected yeah, to his for, wife's death, for, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. To take care of his children. You know, yeah. But isn't that, that. It, it, and that's unfortunate for him. So I should say, let's talk. It, but, are there but he, any, never, he never returned either. He but, never returned, yeah, even after all that time. Ricky Williams. Oh, Ricky Williams, the football player, right? The guy from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. That's who we're talking about. Barry Sanders. Yeah. That is also, by the way, when I mention sports, Barry Sanders was the first one to pop into my head. I think Barry Sanders got tired of being on a losing team and just said, screw it. Mark Hamill went to voice acting. Uh, I feel like Mark Hamill was just in the Star Wars he, TV he's show. Also, was he not? Yeah, and he's been yeah, in he, other shows. Uh, he does yeah. Mix. yeah. Andrew Lick. I don't know who that is. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Um, is there anything you guys follow? Any musicians I've seen sometimes leave? Um, let's see. 
I'm always fascinated to find out somebody has that dual ability, you know, where they can just go, where they can leave. Like the doctors at BioWare decided to make games, made some of the best games anybody's ever remembered, and then turns around and leaves again. Oh, Megatron? Megatron? I don't know what that is. Jordan did, then came back. Well, any others? I don't know of any, like, celebrity like that, but I would say that a lot of the really interesting people that I listen to in podcasts uh, and stuff like that are multidisciplinary people who like, you know, they got really good at a particular thing in a certain yeah. field and then they changed completely. Like someone started in, you know, uh, molecular physics uh, and then like they changed to, you know, electronics or they changed to philosophy. And a lot of these people, uh, are really interesting to listen to because they have a very unique like talent stack of things mm -hmm. coming together and the way they speak about things is usually pretty unique so i would say in general um i think that's a, a good sign of uh, like a rich person uh, you know s someone who is like exploring different things like that and they do switch it up I also love the idea of Underworld, the TV, the movie with uh, Kate Beckinsale. Underworld, the, yeah. the the giant werewolf guy. That guy was a, a worked on blood science for years, and that's how he oh. created the Underworld world. All the vampires, and, and then became then became an actor for the movies. Did all that, and then did comics. But it's crazy to think he was a scientist and was like, you know, on his day job was like writing up some ideas and was like, let's make a movie. And they got Underworld. What mm. one, two, three, four? Underworld. You know. Underworld, Underworld, they have like three subtitled movies and stuff like that. It's pretty crazy how uh, popular that became from somebody just bringing something in. Well, like I said, it, it, sometimes it's cool when those guys are interdisciplinary, you know, when they bring something in mm. and they can sort of s stretch do, themselves. Do you know um, Elsa Pataki, Chris, uh, what's his name? Chris's wife? Thor, the, Chris, yeah, Chris yeah, Helmsworth's wife, yeah. Chris Helmsworth's wife. Um, so she's from Spain, so I knew her, you know, from like when I lived in Spain, not personally, just like, yeah. she's very famous there. Uh, but she uh, famously was, um, I think, uh, let me confirm, like a bio, yeah, a biochemist. Oh, damn. She was a biochemist, and then she went on to be an actor and model and stuff. So. Oh, no shit? See, that, that type of stuff is always cool, because we always yeah. get this idea of people who are rich, and, you know, it's like you think of them as dumb or whatever. You're like, oh, all you can do is act. And they're like, actually, no, let's talk about my thesis I wrote. You're like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Anything else and we got? Was, oh, oh go Yeah, ahead. Um, there was um, probably the best, certainly one of the best female um, racing car drivers of all time, rally driver Michel Mouton, uh, retired to sort of focus on family as well and build a family life just um, left, so she left. Did kind of she did kind of return to motorsport i think like 20 years later or so to to work for the uh international motorsport um body of the fia mm. um, sort of on the side so but yeah. not racing she didn't come back to racing right no 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 i mean she she would would race in like uh, exhibition events every now and again or like special events but but not in like professional capacity no right any from you, Abzi, that you follow? No, not really. I don't can't think of one off the top of my head. Not even in music, huh? Where you've met these people because of your side, your your other job or whatever, and where like you found out one no, of them those guys, had some. Like uh, those guys that I listen to or like talk to or whatever, they uh, their their main job isn't usually music. Like they they do it because they love it. They don't make that much money off of it, but they they they're like usually like sound um engineers or, or music composers or whatever in like movies and and games and stuff like that yeah oh, they, gotcha. they usually have like a main job involving music and then as a side job they like dj and produce like albums or whatever yeah i think one of the best examples of course is tom cruise he's a stuntman who became an actor basically i mean i'm just joking but it is what it's like it's like <laughs> yeah. it's, it is like a stuntman who can Chan? act jack Chan, Jackie yeah Chan? yeah he right. started as a stuntman on other people's Bruce side Lee? movies uh, Bruce Lee was full martial artist, but yeah, he became an actor. He became an actor. Yeah, yeah you, you get a lot of those Justin Timberlakes and yeah, where they they have that other skill that John what Cena, I, John the Cena. Rock. Yeah, the Rock has become the Rock so became... big that 
Oh, go ahead. Dude, he, he's become so big that I feel like he's become like a shell, like a corporate like yeah. entity, right? Like it's just, <laughs> yeah. Every True. time he speaks, he's like b b promoting something. Like, Dude, I, I there's like going to be an insurance where he backs it. It'll be like the like, rock insurance, you know? Where, yeah, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Does yeah, he have a yeah, personality or something? Like, what, what well, is he? Like, what, what do you think? Like, does he, he has a family. Do you think he's like yeah. normal with? Do you, I bet do you, think you at home I bet you he is. I bet you he's more normal yeah. than we see, including negativity. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure he's positive. You can tell by the work. You know, it's ob there's obviously a motivation that's beyond anything you and I have. I mean, I'm not dissing yeah, on yeah. your eye. I'm just saying it's obvious no, no, no. that there's a yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. gap somewhere between me <laughs> yeah. and you and him. Diet would be yeah, one yeah. for me. And so yeah. you see this guy that. But I bet you just like everybody else. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, Indio just brought up Jennifer Lopez, who was a backup singer. And, oh, and yeah. then he says, really? because became a singer and she's not even good at it. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. She was a singer. Yeah. I just, yeah, shake that. Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. yeah received bachelor's yeah, degrees. She's yeah. Sold yeah albums since then. Like, she uh, did sold albums. a couple billion. Sold a couple. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jenny on the block, baby. Just trying to be normal. Dropping the red pill terms, hoping that hey, she becomes. I miss classic The Rock. What if he said, I miss the classic rock? Like, can, you can't say that, right? I miss the classic The Rock. The Rock. Oh yeah, you have to say it. I miss cla I, I miss the classic oh. The Rock. The I miss rock. classic oh, The Rock. Yeah, but because otherwise people are gonna be like, the '80s are still around. Every time <laughs> he shows up in anything, like an event or anything, he's always like the face of some product. Like he's not there just to, to be like you know, cool or or fun. Remember when they got him representing. To his new yeah. juice or you know his new <laughs> shoe <laughs> remember when they got him to like for 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 a minute for like uh the the summer games festival yeah <laughs> he's just blathering yeah. i will say this yeah. uh, especially when you you hear chris uh hart when you hear chris hart talk and a lot of them talk kevin so hart? kevin hart i'm sorry i knew i was gonna mess it up yeah but you'll hear a lot of them talk about what they do. And obviously they do a lot of stuff for teens, especially the Rockies done all kinds of motivational stuff, not connecting to drinks and shit. But I think it was Kevin who had stated, you know, if I'm going to show up, it, like I'm going to make that show up that time. I'm going to use the time that I'm on screen in the way that benefits me, which also will benefit them, which will make me go to those events. And that means prime or whatever you're selling cocaine drink, whatever it is that you're selling at the time. I mean, Snoop Dogg even said, remember when they were talking about Snoop Dogg and he knew exactly how much money it was for him to do a verse on somebody's song. There's a yeah. very cool interview where they're like, how much? And he knew exactly. He was like, he was like, I can't remember what it was, but he's like, you know, this will get you eight bars or whatever. You know, it's just like he knew he, he he's just like, yeah, I'll, and I'll show up on somebody's stuff if they want to. So why not? So get me 50,000 blunts rolled. Yeah. Oh, I also I also remember someone else who actually is a really good example for for like excellence, which is um, another racing car driver. Funnily enough, um, Sebastian Loeb, who is um, a French rally driver, who won the World Tra Championship uh, Rally Championship nine times in a row. Um, but he, you actually started out as an elite gymnast in France, and he was one of the very best gymnasts in France um, as a young man. And then he sort of made the he sort of lost passion for that a little bit right. and started really getting, getting an interest in in, ra in racing rally cars. And he didn't really become like a, a real rally driver until his like mid twenties, which is when he started getting um, scouted by Citroën and he started, and he made the transition into the WRC and started winning just rally after rally after rally, rally and after broke rally. all the record books. But I think the part like what makes him so unique as a racing car driver is that sort of past as a an, as an actual elite professional athlete with, with gymnast as a gymnast, and the mentality of having to reach that what he had to do to reach that level, and the mentality he had to do to reach that yeah. level in terms of like preparation and and training and all and conditioning and all that. Yeah, I'm always amazed. Travis Pastrana is still alive. That he's not excellent. <laughs> yeah. He but he is uh he he's excellent at being crazy. And the stuff, I mean, no matter what he joins, it you know it's going to be entertaining. You don't know if it'll win because it's actually quite rare because he always tries to pull off some stupid move. But he he's always one of those guys that uh, it, that interests me. And I'm sure he's in pain already. I think he even talked about it. Travis Past or Pastrana died recently. Did Travis Pastrana die? I don't think he died. I think I would have heard that. Well, Ken, Ken Block did. Ken Block uh, did. A couple of years ago. Yeah, Ken Block if did. That's Because yeah. I think Pastrana wrote a big thing about it because they were doing the, the X game thing where they would race each other occasionally right. and stuff like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else?
that we've got? There, there was one thing that popped up. Let's do uh, it. Go for it. One Punch Man had a game come out on mobile. So it's a, this is a mobile game from the uh, based on the One Punch Man anime. Mm-hmm. And th- it's a gacha game, right? But here's the kicker. They had a $1,000 character pack that people could buy day one. So for context, so normally you have to roll to get characters, right? And you have like some chance of getting particular characters and some of the rare ones, you have like a tiny impossible chance of getting them. And this is like to, to get them for sure. Uh, it's a thousand dollars. But of course, you know, in the first day or whatever, they had it uh, discounted to a hundred. So you only had to pay $100 for the pack, but it just kind of goes to show the, the levels of monetization that we're at for like mobile stuff. Yeah. Mobile's mobile's crazy, man. That's competitive. You know what I mean? Like (laughs) that's working. So yeah, it's working for some whale who, who their thousand dollars is my $1. I mean, that's uh, yeah. honestly what it is, is like they just figured out, hey, let's just try it out and see what happens. We've seen it a couple of times with pro versions of some games where they're like 239 or 240. It doesn't happen <laughs> as often, but it's and yeah. Star Citizen, you know, you buy a, a ship. It's a thousand dollars or whatever. I mean, I wouldn't, but somebody did. Somebody out there bought one for a thousand dollars. It's just absolutely <laughs> nuts. All right. That'll be yeah, it for us. I want to say thanks to everybody for joining in. Thanks to these guys for coming by. You will see us next Wednesday. And next Friday, I think we might have a guest. We'll have to see on those. I'm checking in on them. You also see reviews from me next week. Uh, one, I think you'll see one for sure. I think there might be two next week. Um, that'll be it for us. If you get a chance, make sure you are subscribed. Notify all. Get a chance. Check out the patron. It's always there to help you guys jump in to an awesome Discord. And I hope everybody has an incredible weekend. Speaking of that, what are you streaming, Johnny? I'm streaming Infinite Wealth. Oh hell yeah! On my channel at 2 p.m. UK time, 9 a.m. ET. Excellent. It's ET, right? It's not yeah. EDT. No, it's ET. Are All you, right. Uh, John, oh, never mind. No, you can go ahead. No, I was just going to say congratulations to Johnny as a five star resort now. I am Everybody a five star resort. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in, uh, in Yakuza. Oh, dude. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, they did the Animal Crossing better than Animal Crossing. I know Honestly. they did. played Animal oh, no, they Crossing. Did. I know they did. So hard. Dude, Yakuza <laughs> is so good. Fuck ending. Yakuza <laughs> is, dude, Yakuza <laughs> does better than most other games at almost all the stuff that they do now. Like, it, yeah. it may yeah. not Sujimon, be technically I'm as good. It's, it's, it's all combined, man. It's all, I know. Yeah, you got the Sujimon and everything. It's, it's all combined. Yeah, they, it's they're all they're overlapping. It's all world. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, it, yeah. Dude, it's absolutely nuts. Not only that, but the, the combat they mixed in so you can have a special where, like, you know, you attack in real time. I mean, they did, they, yeah. they did, they thought of almost everything. And, yeah. They, and I know that they said that uh, they even talked about how they released so many games. They said, you know, a lot of developers aren't doing this. And I'm like, yeah, you can tell. Like, they're not. It's hard. And they've made it not. It, it, I, I, I don't want to say they've made it not look hard. I think you can see the genuine toil they put into it. But at the same time, right. it also feels effortless. It is very unique that's, as a game, man. Yeah. yeah. That's often yeah. one of the things that's so special about excellence, isn't it? When you have someone who's able to make what seems to be impossible yeah. or, or unlikely seem effortless. I mean, like the best mm-hmm. gaming podcast, effortless. <laughs> effortless. <laughs> All right, that's it for us. Peace out, everybody. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) have a good one, guys. Take care.